with the real, you hit up in the front, so you get my meals, so I'm gunning for the money, money in the bank, coming with a dank, scrolling a tank, rolling with the gang, you sitting out on the sideline, tripping, I go to the hole with the rock like Pippin, yeah, 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 I'm okay. What up, though, and welcome back to World Heavyweights Live on WorldSports.com. I'm your boy Easy. That's my guy, Spin More Live, Rats. Live, baby. Uh, I know some of you guys are probably surprised to see us still here. We still standing, motherfucker. We still standing. Okay. Only dudes to go on. No, actually, you're the only dude to go live on Fox and get a lap dance. I say. <laughs> I do not remember <laughs> that situation happening. All I know is uh, we got, yeah, we got, I got one. You got one too. Yeah, yeah got don't one. try to throw me in. Hey, mine was bad though. Yeah, she had the fatty. Yeah, she did. I didn't know that. I didn't know I was coming. All I know is uh, yeah, yo, it was a good day. I remember so many people were texting me like, "Oh, I saw you at the, bro, I saw you at the event. I saw you at the event." I was freaking out. I thought people were like gonna be pissed because we weren't talking or anything like that. But like, no, bro, we no. did. Good <laughs> numbers. Shout out to you guys. Shout out to you guys because I. Don't remember half of what happened that day. Strap just turned to a, a dance party. Yeah, <laughs> that's literally what it turned into. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we were talking before the show started, like how like so our quads were like the yeah. next day. Yep. Shout out. Um, I did send it. What were you say? Uh, Steve O Baby says Spencer, you were twerking a little. Oh yeah. Like I said, man, it was uh, it was all a blur. It was all a dream. Used to read Weirdo magazine. But it was a great time. Shout out to Grand Slam Fest. Yeah. Shout out to Stick. Shout out to DJ Godfather. Yeah. Shout out to everybody that threw it down. It was a great time. Um, shout out to my baby Snack Mama, the uh, the uh, bartender that's been hooking me up the past three years, keeping me uh, lubricated. Nice. And yeah, it's it's always a good time, man. I have a lot of fun down there. And uh, shout out to my dad for picking me shout up. Shout out to Pops. Yeah. So I was gonna get an Uber, but my card got frauded the day before. And me, Easy, and Dr. Pierce went to walk to some place. <laughs> and they You're wouldn't so let us pissed. in. They wouldn't let us in because of our backpacks. And I I don't handle bullshit very well when I'm drunk. Like if, if something goes wrong in the plan, I just immediately pivot and go like back to what I was doing or go do something else. So as soon as the bartender was like, or the the bouncer's like, no, you guys can't come in yeah. here with those. I just 86 right back to the tent, got right back up on stage, started going hard again, and then uh, I called my dad, and he came pick me up, and then I went to Coonan. Did you come in last place? Uh, we didn't even play Mario Kart. We played Smash Bros. I caught a couple dubs. Oh, damn. Still? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Impressive. Dear. I'm elite at Smash Did you ever quit drinking, or did you keep it nope. going? No, kept it going. Had like four or five drippers, and then we, oh, hell yeah. then we went back to Dom's house, and I did, me and Ron were doing shots at Dom's house. I got home at like 4 a.m. Yeah, actually, yeah, I can remember because I woke up randomly at 4 a.m. And I hearted D-Max message in the group chat. <laughs> and I saw you hearted right after. I was like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh yeah, it was, uh, rolling. it was a night. It was a night. It was a day. It was a lot of fun. Um, my, my card, not my car, my card got frauded. So that's why I couldn't Uber because my uh, credit card, I had to cancel it because somebody charged like, Fifteen hundred dollars worth of AT and T bills in Dallas, Texas, to my credit card. So I got to go get a new one tomorrow. But it's crazy. That, like times that I've traveled, I've had my card not work. It's like, oh, you're not in Michigan, but that could happen. Yeah, it, it pissed me a off. Six hundred dollar purchase in in Texas. Yeah, and they were all pending. Still, it was like four of them that were pending. So I called my bank and I was like, can't since they're pending, they haven't gone through yet. Can you just like cancel them? Like, since they're still pending, like, just cancel them. Don't let them go through. Yeah. And they're like, no, we have to let them go through, and then we refund you. Like, what? How, do, how does that make sense? <laughs> if that if is... they're pending, just don't let them go through. But yeah, now I have, like, $1,200 charge. That is wild. Uh, you were twerking. I was freestyling while you were twerking. Yeah, I, I looked I back at the, <laughs> at the stream. I couldn't hear anything on the stream, like, through our headphones, because the DJ, shout out DJ Godfather. Who shout was, out. He's the main event there when it comes for the DJs, and he was tearing up right behind us. So I couldn't hear anything. You or Flannel were, like, trying to talk to me or trying to kick it back to me. I was like, yeah! <laughs> I was like, so that's the part. I remember vividly at the beginning, I was like, oh, wow, it was just the old people that couldn't hear each other. And like, it must have been, like, a, a break in the music where the, that they were talking or Stick was talking or something like that. Because immediately after I said that, you started talking, I was like, 
Oh shit! Yeah, I can't hear no, anything. Could, uh, could not either. hear a single thing anybody was saying. So that's why we just started dancing for like an hour, and that was one hour or two hour show of like eight hours of consecutive dancing that it was I did. An hour there. thirty. Of, I'm pretty sure it was us straight dancing. <laughs> yeah, it was a good time. It was a good time. Uh, always a good time down there at Grand Slam Fest. At one point, they put Flannel Sam on like the other where we interviewed Mike. Yeah, and uh, he's talking and. I think it was KG who was charged the audio. They didn't turn us down, so we're still, like, screaming yeah. random shit. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> if when I was trying to talk about the game, we're like, yeah! <laughs> Take it off! <laughs> I felt bad because, like, there was a bunch of people that came out, you know, the guys that won the tickets through us, and appreciate you all showing up. It was, it was yes. nice to meet all you guys, and I'm sorry because I promised, like, three people. Like I was like, yeah, we're interviewing people. You know, interview? You were, we're going to interview people during our show, so like, come up and we'll interview you. We would have if we could hear anything. We would have interviewed you guys, but literally you guys would have been up there talking. We wouldn't hear a word of what you were saying. But no. that actually, that we had that experience. We were trying to interview Mike mm-hmm. the first time because you, like, you're so pissed. <laughs> so Spinny's reads Premier Pet Supply. Yeah. He's like, don't worry, Easy. I got this. <laughs> he does his read, bring us back from break. He's like, Mike, how you doing? <laughs> Nothing. And I'm like, Mike, how you doing? And he starts talking. You're like, <laughs> yeah, I. It was it was, was a, it was an experience. It was a lot of fun though. What were you about to say, Chris? No, I was just saying that that part in particular was funny because <laughs> I, I feel Spencer's frustration. Like Easy was like, I could hear fine, and Spencer's just like, well, I'm just useless here. Like, <laughs> well, I could hear you. I just couldn't hear him. Yeah. Which is weird because you're like you were across from me. Yeah. Maybe because I, I was I could look at my mouth the words. Maybe I, I don't know. I, I couldn't hear anybody. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I from I Mike I had a couple. Chris, how much time do we got left? Yeah, dude. This yeah. is my uh, shout out to Mike actually too. When Mike did come on, killed it. Shout yeah, out to Mike. Baseball. Yeah. Uh, he, he knocked it out of the park. Yeah, no pun intended. Um, and shout out Premier Pet Supply. Shout yeah. out to Premier Pet Supply. Everything I said too about him is true. Like when we were there. Like he come in obviously with the people, but he knew mm-hmm. the pets too. And the pets, mm-hmm. like, I'm like, that's that's actually dope. That's like the owner of the store that's like tight with everyone like that. But this is by far my favorite moment from Friday. I literally cried. I had to take my headphones off from, to stop myself from screaming. This shit was so funny. I, like, I wish I recorded the whole thing. Which one? The first one you sent me or the second? First one. First one. Okay. Yeah. Here's the first one. Oh man. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, you can hear his laugh. Listen to his laugh. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Before that, though, she was with another, she was like an older lady, too. It was the two of them. She was a bad in the face. Ah. Ah. From what? I mean, I hardly remember, too, I guess. I don't remember. Like I said, I don't remember, but. Dog, that shit was so funny, bro. Oh my god, bro. That was so <laughs> You're getting into this shit too. Bro, all Tim was like, stop them! Yeah. Stop! <laughs> That's what it's all about. And I think the camera was on Sam when I was yelling at him. I was like, get, go, get! <laughs> <laughs> it was the best. I have to, I have to find that clip during the, the break. Oh my god, bro. That shit was so funny. <laughs> Just vibing on a turn around. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Dude? <laughs> Spinny was full go mode too. He said, yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, throw back. I'm <laughs> do what you gotta do, baby. That's yeah. Don't remember, like I said, don't remember like half of the day. It was uh Ooh, man, that was the best part. <laughs> What's the other one I sent you? The other one you sent me here. I'll just play I'll just play I this. I remember one. now. It was like he has like golf flannel salmon as a reliever. The cl- let, for dude, closing, dude. I did it multiple times. I brought D Mac in, I brought flannel in to sit in the seat. I was like, Well, th- that one's so funny because like they brought him in to close it out because that was complete chaos at that point. Yeah. His mic's not on. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. The microphone slaps him in the face, too, on top of it. <laughs> Dapper said Spenny had a downriver Harley Quinn. Definitely, yeah, definitely downriver girl. Perfectly put on. Spot. Yeah, yeah. for Harley sure. Quinn. Um, Good time. Like I said, man. It was a good day. Yeah, you guys got to come next year. So you sure. got a face. Like, 
like we run the commercial, we hype it up. It's that's how it is every single time. It's how, yeah. It's you, you gotta come next year. <laughs> Pause. No Diddy. Like no Diddy. That's my that's my favorite day of the year every year. By far. Um, felt like a stripper Friday. Yeah, yeah. By the way, a lot more respect for strippers now. Yeah. Just how sore I was from just dancing Dude, on I stage. Was da- I almost fell down the stairs the next day because my legs were so sore. And so, like, I woke up, ate breakfast, laid down on the couch for, like, six hours, took a nap, came back to, and, like... The day's been open. <laughs> yeah, came back to, went and took a shower, and then, uh, so I walked downstairs to, like, get some, some underwear and some shorts and stuff to put on, and I almost fell down the stairs because my <laughs> legs were so, like, dead. Like, I took the first step, I was like, oh, <laughs> it was, uh, yeah. To be honest, we danced more than strippers because they danced for, like, what, two songs? Yeah. Andrew Jones says, y'all were dancing for like 45 minutes straight. Exactly. Only on camera for 45 minutes straight. Yeah. We were dancing the entire time for like Before the show. Five hours. After the show. <laughs> yeah. After the show, a lot less dancing for myself. I got I to gotta be honest with you guys. I was up there dancing the whole time. I turned around and Easy's got this like loaded fry thing. Oh, yeah. I didn't eat the entire. I had one hot dog the that entire day. That was so good. And I saw Easy eating back there. I ran over there. Ate some of it. He like went to give it to me. And I was like, no. I came back to it. Went back up on stage. Started <laughs> dancing again. There was chicks throwing their legs up on the little guardrail for VIP. Yeah. Dude. I was copying them. I just uh, kept doing it back. Yeah. That one old lady who first started dancing, you kept trying to sneak. I'm like, no, no, no. Yeah, no. she kept no, trying to sneak. Yeah. yeah. And then this bad mixed chick came out. I was like, eh, you call. Yep. <laughs> You're allowed it. Uh, Detroit Dever. A lot, more, a lot more respect for strippers. How sore I was after I woke up. Pause. That's fair. That's a, that's big a fair pause. pause. Yeah, that's, that's a, a big that's pause. A pause. A pause should have been implemented there. Spencer, don't drink that much again. Listen, Officer Anakin, you don't tell me how to live my life. <laughs> it uh, would be Anakin to say that. How about so? Speaking of drinking, real quick, and we'll get into the show too. But like, did you guys see Defondre Sweat DWI over the weekend? Stupid. Well, you're less than three weeks until you're going to become a multi-millionaire. You, you you moved yourself up into the second round. Mm-hmm. Arguably at, at Senior Bowl, and then you do something stupid like that. You already weighed in at like semi overweight at the combine, yet you neglected to weigh in at the Senior Bowl, which is kind of sketchy. Bro, what do you, how do you, how do you fuck up that? I, as I did on Friday, as I said every time the Miggy situation would happen, just pay somebody to do it. Like you're that rich, you got that much money, just pay someone to drive you. Uber's a thing, Lyft's a thing, all of that, taxis are a thing, you got boys. Make sure someone is there to drive you. Go have fun. Do whatever you want, but just don't drive. Like, it's just stupid. That's not. Shout out Pops. Shout out Pops. Yeah, Devon just sweat. I I mean, I already thought he wasn't a Dan Campbell, Brad Holmes guy, just from, like, the the weight issues and just, like, seemingly what that correlates to. You know, you can say what you want. I understand the talent on the field. The stuff that we don't get to see is the -the off-the-field stuff. I mean, we were in love with Jalen Carter. He was a... Pretty good prospect by by all people, by all standards when it comes to on the football field. Off the football field is when there was there's reservations and we don't get to see that part of it. Devondre Sweat just kinda confirmed that, stamped that in. Uh chat. I know a lot of you guys like Devondre Sweat. I need your reaction. I think he dude, what did, what did the Texans grab in like the fourth round? Put him on that defensive line. Cause he's still gonna play. Yeah. I don't know, he's just, he's just dumb. He just cost himself money. Nick, did you were you a Javondre Sweat guy? I was not, and obviously you just can't do that before the draft. You know, it kind of reminds you of, like, the um, gas mask situation. You know, that was actually on draft night when that happened. That was pretty crazy. But to see Trevante Sweat blow it just like that, I mean, he'll go probably, like, sixth, seventh, I think. But I don't – like, this – you you take this guy off your board like a lot of teams probably do. Yeah, I'm wondering I'm – re- I'm really curious. Where do you think he falls? Me? Probably like third, late third, early fourth. If he was already projected like late third, second, fourth, or, and then yeah. this happens, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with you. Maybe like a fourth or fifth. I can see him slide. I can see. I him bet sl- the Raiders take him in the third, or the Cowboys take him in the third. Like I don't think he'll fall. That'd be a good spot. For they don't fall too far. It seems like Cowboys a Cowboys, Cowboys or yeah, Raiders. It's Cowboy, yeah, That's Cowboys. What I'm yeah. yeah. True that. Which I, I mean, can see that. guys, because not all teams like Our think Lions. like the Lions do. Yeah. Sometimes it works out. Like the Chiefs, what if the Chiefs got him in the third round? I don't know. The Chiefs got to chill with guys with vehicle situations there. Because <laughs> they had Andy Reid's son, then Ray Rice. I'm sorry, not Ray Rice, but uh, Rashid. Rashid Rice. Yeah. yeah, but Rashid Rice didn't like, this, kill anybody or anything. Everybody's he could have. Yeah, he could have. That's pretty sure. fucking stupid. But like, and then he ran off. 
I mean, he had to be. Trevante wasn't what running. Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> He's not running no. nowhere. <laughs> well, he got flicked. But, uh, yeah, we got tons of sports for you guys. Um, we will be talking Red Wings and Tigers to begin the show and lots of Detroit Lions, if you guys are wondering. Uh, because the Red Wings, can we, get it? can we get one out of you, Nick? Hockey Town is back. <laughs> we Red, got some Red games to win, fellas. Let's yeah, go. is a bitch. Oh, oh man. We'll say that for the end. Or maybe we'll find somewhere in between. We'll, we'll find it out. But, uh. Caitlin First. Clark lost. You guys thrilled she lost? I'm not thrilled. It's just... <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Don't ever call her the GOAT again. I mean, she's the GOAT of... GOAT of what? College. GOAT of uh, what? No, she's not. You can't be the GOAT. Well, it's not like pro where you can stay there forever and keep taking shots She was there it. for four years. She got back-to-back championship losses. Oof. If you're not the GOAT, unless you... Like, you can call her the greatest offensive player in college. Yeah, for sure. No, the GOAT is Maya Moore. I was about to say, uh, let's see, you take Iowa to championship, Vinny. That's pitch you literally on the court. Oh, uh, bro. <laughs> I'll be putting shoulders on Vinny. <laughs> Nasty post game. <laughs> yeah. No, but. Zach Eady out there. That, that's your GOAT. She's a fantastic player. Amazing player. Probably the best offensive uh, women's college player of all time, but she's not the GOAT. You can't be the GOAT and not win a championship. I'm sorry. Well, guys, let me tell you about the Shake Shack Chicken Shack Sandwich. It's the best in the biz, Buy more the sleeper of them all. If you guys make any purchase of $10 up and use promo code Wilbur, that's in person, online, or on the app, make sure you download the app today. You get a free Chicken Shack Shake Shack Sandwich. Make sure you guys do that. It's a Shake Shack Chicken Shack Sandwich. Use the promo code Wilbur for one free after purchase of $10 or more. Is that an octopus in your pants, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness! Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. Love Woodward Sports. Love wearing clothes. Then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com. Just click on shop. We have all your favorite designs, like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Woodward Golf, and of course, our own logo out merchandise. Men, women, infants, kids all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends. Impress your boss. Impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. Are you tired of wearing the same old Detroit sports? Merch! Merch! It's a new era in sports wearables, new design, amazing appeal, the ultimate swag. Check out Woolworth Sports' latest gear at WoolworthSports.com. Click the shop tab today. Find yourself hoodies, tees, hats, all guaranteed to turn heads. Head on over to WoolworthSports.com. Click the shop tab and get yourself some brand new merch. Merch! What up, though? Welcome back to Water Everywhere. It's live on WoodWordSports.com. I'm Easy. Join my guys from Morex. What up, though? Young Chris, Nicholas Koloff. Let's Let's smash go. that like button. Be a friend. Tell a friend. Share the stream. Red Wings back. Let's this is go. One Nicholas Koloff would say, "How was your trip?" All right, we'll get to that in the show. We'll yeah, show. we'll get we'll get into it later. I'm burning up in here already, though. <laughs> I'm sweating. <laughs> uh, it's all good, though. I was lucky enough to watch the game. Coming home, though, I had enough service, so that was hype, especially with the Tigers playing the way they were. Spend Mo, what were your reactions to the win yesterday for the Red Wings? Oh, it was awesome. It was awesome. It was a great win. Obviously, they got up 3-0 in the in the first period, uh, and then they got one more. Or, uh, they got one in the first period, so it was 3-1 Red Wings over the Sabres. A couple, two fights in the first period, too. That was an electric, electric first 20 minutes of hockey. Mo Siders had 10 block shots. By himself in that game. That's insane. Ten block oh, shots by Mo Sider. He had more block shots than the entire Sabres team. So that was awesome. This was a must win. Next week or next game is a must win against Washington. The game after that is a must win against Pittsburgh. But you love to see that. You love to see the guys that you need to step up, step up. Guys like Dylan Larkin, guys like Patrick Kane. And it, it was just a good performance. Alex Lyon looked great. Had some huge saves down the stretch. So I was extremely happy with the Red Wings' performance. Uh, Edmondson looks like he's he is him. Like the guy's been yeah, playing yeah. lights out, and 
I fucking knew it. Like, I, the, there was no way this kid wasn't going to be a dog. So I'm happy he's playing at the level that he is. Uh, Mo Sider still doing things. Lucas Raymond might be the best player for the Red Wings all year this year, like consistent wise. If Larkin didn't have his stretches of injury, it would be him. But consistently, it's been Lucas Raymond all year. So it's good to see the boys. Uh, good to see the boys buzzing right now, and hopefully we can take that momentum and and kick that kick the crap out of the two teams we got ahead of us because these are basically winning in games. These are two four point games coming up against Washington and against Pittsburgh. You need to win them both, and you need to win them both in regulation. How, how com- like, how's Pittsburgh looking on this, uh, I guess, the, the, on the year? I mean, they, they, they're heating up. Like, like Crosby's heating up. Malkin had two goals in their last game, I think. So the boys are heating up a little bit in, in, in Pittsburgh. But all of the teams that are in the situation as the Red Wings are, it's you never know what you're going to get from them. And they're all – like 500 hockey teams. They're all teams that can either look like a playoff team, look like a, a pl- super playoff contender one night, or look like a lottery team the next night. You don't know what you're going to get out of any of these teams. So we just need to ride the hot goalie. We need to ride the hot hand in guys like Kane, Larkin, and Raymond and, and keep it buzzing. And, you know, we got an offense that can put up goals with the best of them. So hopefully they hopefully they stay hot, get a couple power play uh, opportunities, no more stupid, stupid penalties like, that I, I, I mean, I understand a couple of them were given to the Sabres that really shouldn't have been penalties, but just play smart and, and put the puck in the back of the net. You need these wins. Nick, were you able to watch the Sabres game? I'm sorry, the yeah, Rangers game? I was able to watch a lot of the Sabres game. Um, the Rangers game, I was not. We were cooking on Friday. Yeah, we were um, Yeah, too. we were. <laughs> yeah, I did not watch <laughs> much of the Rangers game, but... um. With the Sabres, I mean, this is what you want to see at this time is your stars shining. You know, that's Patty Kane, that's Lucas Raymond and Dylan Larkin all getting goals. Like Spenmo said, 10 block shots from Cider. It's like, this is what this playoff push is all about. And it's for Raymond and Cider and Edvinson you can throw in at this point too. These are Stevie's draft picks. We want our young players to look the part going forward for this playoff push. And these guys seem to look the part and I feel confident moving forward, especially in this Capitals game. The Pens one scares me a little bit because we've seen Malkin just absolutely destroy the Detroit Red Wings throughout his career. So that one scares me a little bit. But it, I think we got to take care of business in this Capitals game tomorrow night at LCA. And I think we will. That's a huge game. Are they gonna, that one's going to go national, right? I think I saw yesterday. So is that going to be on TNT mm-hmm. or ESPN? I think TNT. I hope TNT. I enjoy the TNT broadcast a lot more. Um, yeah, TNT is way better than ESPN. Way, way, way better. It's insane. Um, I, I know we we talked about it after the trade deadline, too. Whether really disappointed or not, they, if you acquired somebody and stuff, and we just didn't really have the cap space in making those moves. But I remember specifically saying we did call up Edvinson, mm-hmm. and we didn't end up keeping him there. And it, it has been that upgrade. It has been like a little bit of a difference maker there on defense. And I think whether we make the playoffs or not, I think it's just good for him to get that experience because this is when guys – we're facing a lot of teams in the same like little bit of a race there. And this is where the time where everybody's like most hungry. Not even just like the guys you're playing against, but the players on your team too. And, oh, you just so happen to be playing with fucking Patrick Kane. What? <laughs> yeah, there, there is no AC in the booths. It gets hot in there, boys. So they're all talking about – Nick Sweatin. Nick Sweatin. Yeah, it looks like he's about to have a panic attack. No, chill out. I'm feeling good. No, Don't but, worry. Um, those, those boots get hot. <laughs> Trust, me. Trust me. I remember my first summer in that booth when back then they used to make us keep the doors closed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, oh, when I first started, mm-hmm. TD for uh, the hook. Yeah. No AC. There was no, yeah, none of this, that. This wasn't, yeah, this wasn't a thing. <laughs> yeah. Fuck, it was brutal. Got, got pretty brutal in there. But, yeah, boys are in for a hot summer. Um, but yeah, you need, they need to keep playing all they have. Like, like you guys said, they need the big dogs to step up. This is when you want to, when you want to take control of that playoff spot. If you want to make sure that you get where you need to go, you need your best players to be your best players at the most opportune times. And that's what we saw in that last game. Like Nick said, you had your three best offensive players step up and score goals. You had your best defensive player block 10 fucking shots by himself. So that's what you need to keep going. You need your guys your big guys, your your important players to step up and be those guys. I know it was a loss at the end of the day, but the Rangers are pretty fucking good. For us to keep it close like it was in that oh, game, Oh, yeah, they're too. arguably the best team in hockey. Yeah, like, and I get hockey, I guess there's some puck luck in, in situations like that, too. But I, I guess to have it that close, I, 
I was impressed. And I think they're like, they turned it on for like this last stretch of the season. Mm -hmm. And it's a little bit of luck's going to have to fall away too, if I'm being honest with you. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of hockey is luck. You know, you need certain teams to lose. The puck luck, you need pucks to bounce certain ways. And so hopefully uh, hopefully we get it down the stretch. That's for sure. It is We need the hockey guys to smile on us. You know, fuck the Penguins. Fuck the Capitals. Got to go out there and take it, though. That's You control your own destiny. It's crazy you have to do it against two legends as well, you know. Yeah. Ovi and... Uh, Put them in the coffin, you man. Know, yeah, exactly. How many yeah. times do we got to teach you this lesson, old man? Like, <laughs> It's, you know, old hockey's dead. Get him out of here. Sorry. I heard, I heard you guys talking about it a little bit earlier. Um, is there any way you think that we can get the cat going for this offense? Because if we do want to, you know get skating to where we can actually maybe win a game if we do make the playoffs or win a couple. One of our best players needs to be Alex to bring it. Yep. Is there anything that you see that maybe kind of stands out to you or is it just strictly maybe hitting the inside of the post instead of the yeah. outside? <laughs> that's that's big for him. I could I don't even know how many posts he's hit in the past couple weeks. It's been ridiculous. He's got the best post percentage in the NHL. So we we need uh like that's the kind of luck thing that easy is talking about you need those pucks to be an inch over you know just an just an inch chris will tell you about just an inch he, he thinks it's a, it's lot, a lot but it, it's really not that mm -hmm. much so you need <laughs> you need to make it's almost too much, <laughs> almost too much. <laughs> <laughs> so those that's the kind of luck that you need and we'll see hopefully hopefully cat gets some of those because uh, that would be huge that's another guy that you it brought in here huge. to be a goal scorer and lead you into the playoffs. So the thing I noticed from the beginning of the season with him is it felt like a lot of his he ate off the power play. Like if, like in the beginning of the season, it felt fairly confident. Like you could almost bet like a power play goal for Cat like almost every other game. Yeah, you remember what I talked you out of? You're like, I'm, I want to bet a Cat trick every game for every <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> thank God. Don't do that. I was just yeah. going. It's gonna be like a little fifty centers, but yeah. like, thank God I didn't do it regardless. <laughs> yeah. It would add it up like pretty quickly here. Yeah, he slowed down. For me, I guess the answer to that question is just like get fixated back on the the power play lineups you you had at the beginning of the season. You know, before we hit that funk, he started changing it up a little bit. There, it was it was top ten in the league, yeah, uh, all around. So I I think that's what we need to do is get him going the power play, get him going back with who I mean, obviously Kane and, and I think it was Kane Larkin was, was the lineup there. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. I mean, they they got, they normally go uh, four forwards sometimes on that power play. Maybe you go back to that. Maybe you go back to that. Maybe maybe you throw. Kane, Perron, Cat, Larkin out there, or or, or Raymond, per, uh, Larkin, Cat, Kane, and then Cider at, at the point. So we'll see what happens with that. But we're going to get it back into more Red Wings for sure. Uh, we got a lot to talk about. Obviously, they got a couple big games coming up ahead of them. But before we do that, Nick, tell us about Feldman. Right now, purchase. Since 1996, <laughs> Feldman Automotive has been driven to provide a fast and convenient first-class car buying experience called the Feldman Advantage. With 18 locations, there's a Feldman dealership in your backyard. Visit FeldmanAuto.com to find the location nearest you. Catch Woodward Sports Network live from Feldman Chevrolet of Novi every other Monday. Feldman Chevrolet, Detroit's number one Chevy dealer. A ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights, live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. <laughs> History. Now it's time to let Brad Holmes cook. Woodward Sports. What happens when you run a great business for over 50 years? You expand and offer more products to more people. That is exactly what Les Stanford did by adding Les Stanford Buick GMC, the same great service that customers have come to know and trust on Wilbert Avenue, just south of Nine Mile. Check out Les Stanford in Dearborn today and find the brand you want at lesstanford.com. Les Stanford, together, let's ride. 
What up, though? Welcome back to Whatever Way It's Live. I'm Oversports.com. I'm Easy. Spin more racks. What up, though? Young Chris, Nicholas Koloff. Smash that like button. Be a friend. Tell a friend. Share the stream. If you guys haven't seen it already, the Detroit Red Wings officially loaned goaltender Ville Husso to AHL's Grand Rapids Griffins for conditioning. Mm-hmm. Meaning his return of old Ville. Ville boy. Uh, question, because Lion... Actually, good game last day, too. Yes, he did. Phenomenal game, actually. Mm-hmm. Who is... Lion's still, oh, Lion's just, still your first goalie. Okay. Lion's still your number one goalie. You're going to put, if, you, if it's a must win game, if it's an important matchup, you're going to put Lion out there. But Villy is a competent goaltender. Like, no disrespect to Reimer, but that is huge to have Villy back because Lion is your number one goalie, but he's not a number one goalie. So he's not used to this kind of workload that he's been getting. So to be able to spell him if you need to, give him maybe two games off in a row or something like that, then you have Villy in there that you feel confident in that can go out there and make some things happen. So that'll be huge. Hopefully Villy, you know, he gets his, his little rehab stint, a couple games, hopefully only one game. That would be awesome in Grand Rapids. And then could come back up here. How long does it usually take for guys to get that conditioning? Normally in? a couple games. So you probably won't see in the rest of the regular season. Maybe not. Maybe the last week of the season. Yeah. Which is the 14th, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. It's only like five, five or six yeah, games I think left. It's five games left. Nick? If he doesn't come back to close out this regular season, Spenmo, are you confident in playing a guy like Billy Huso in the playoffs if you need to? I'd be more confident playing him than Reimer. For sure. Like, if, if that's what it comes down to, I'm more confident in Huso to put him, put him out there. So, obviously, you'd go with Lion if you're in the playoffs and you give Lion three starts in a row. And then if you spell him for that fourth one or whatever it is, then you put Villy out there instead of Reimer. I'd be more confident in that for sure. I'm not confident in Villy Huso coming off of no, <laughs> you know, NHL games in however many months to just throw him out there against the fucking Panthers or the Rangers. Oh, but we got Petrie and Chirabe. Yeah, 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 you see him fucking 30 <laughs> shots at his head. But I'd be more confident in him than Reimer. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Yeah, I've seen Villy. I mean, at the start of, I think it was last year, I saw him like a really good, he was on a really good run, it felt like, but he's just so streaky, like it's insane. So I don't know if I have the utmost confidence, but hopefully he goes down in Grand Rapids and dominates. Mm -hmm. And then you call him up with confidence moving forward. I think that's the best way to go around this. But the updated Red Wings odds to make the playoffs, fellas, Minus 140. Minus 140. Minus 140. Ooh. Just above them is the New York Islanders at minus 260. Fuck the Islanders. Damn. But, and then it's the Pittsburgh Penguins at plus 158, Capitals plus 300, and Flyers plus 450. So they're giving us a pretty decent edge on (sighs) Pittsburgh. That shit's so annoying that the fucking, where the Islanders are at. They got like, what, 14... Or 13 or 14 playoff losses. And so that's the only reason they're still in this race. Yeah, overtime this race. losses. Overtime losses. Overtime, yeah, overtime losses. That's the only reason they're still in this race is because they lose better. Yeah. Like, like the, I think the Red Wings have nine or something like that, and the, Fly, or, and the Islanders have like 13. So if we had that many and we just had – there's four points right there that we would have and we'd be comfortably in there. Like, that's just bullshit, dude. Fuck yeah. you, Gary Bettman. Because we're the only team out of all these teams that is like, as somebody said it in BDE, I can't remember who it was. They're like, the Red Wings are the only one that's close to regular 500 instead of hockey 500. Like, we're the only team out of all of them that is like right there at regular 500. Like 30, the 31? Them, yeah, the rest of them just have like 12 well, I, still overtime gotta, losses. The Islanders are what, 30? I'm going to go right now, they're 35 and 27. It's not like their record shit. But. No, they're 35 and 42 when you yeah. think about it, though. 35 oh, 42 with that's 15 overtime losses. Yeah, 15 overtime. So that's 15 yeah. points for losing. Yeah, that yeah, is. That's our eight. That's fucking stupid. Yeah, that that's is so ball. stupid. I will say, I do love watching some three on three OT. Oh, three on three OT. Three on three OT is, <laughs> three on three OT is, it is electric. You cannot sure. blame. Well, you shouldn't get a point for losing in overtime. Yeah, I agree with that for sure. They're like, what? It's just weird. We like, oh, you almost had two. it. So here you go. Like, does anybody get a buy in the hockey playoffs, Stanley Cup playoffs? No. Like the one no. seeds no. do not? No. Go straight to work. So Bruins 107, Rangers 110. It looks like we're going to get matched up with one of those guys. Is there any – who do you want better? Don't care. I, don't, I, I mean, I personally, I would rather Bruins, see the Bruins. For sure. I would rather see the Bruins, rather but Bruins. I don't think we'll beat either of them, personally, <laughs> if we're coming down to it. I'd, ju- 
I don't care about who we're matched up with. I just want to get in. That's what I'm focused on first is making the playoffs. Obviously, I don't want to see Florida or, or the Rangers. So if it's one of them, I'd really see the Bruins because we kind of had the Bruins number this year, honestly. I think we're yeah. the only team that's beat them like three times. I mean, so, plus, they're coming off that epic collapse last yeah. year. So it's like this is a team that could be mentally – mentally fragile yeah i don't i uh i don't care like i said i'm not looking at matchups right now i'm looking at making it. making the fucking Getting playoffs the dance. yeah who are, the, who are the biggest attorney factors outside of larkin that they need to perform well uh the stretch kane to and i would say our second defense because we know mo we know evanson are both going to do good but we need someone else to like sharat we need sharat or 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 Mata, or somebody to be solid on the back end of that defense for a couple games. Was Wallman a healthy scratch yesterday? I'm not sure about that. Okay, yeah. yeah. I did see that Wallman was not playing. But, um, yeah, I think for me, easy, it comes down to Alex to bring it because I think he can be an X factor for this team. With the, We know Larkin, Raymond, and Kane are going to produce at, to this point. That's where I'm at. They're, they've been consistent enough producing. It's just another starter, another star player we have on this team needs to perform like a star. And honestly, that's where I'm at. It needs to be Alex Brinkett stepping up down the path here because he can be an X factor for this team yeah. where they're not just good, where they turn, or not just, you know, a 500 ish team. They can turn into a good team with maybe some, uh, some momentum going into those playoffs, hopefully. Is Lucas Raymond, is this like a, a turn of the page for him, or do you think he's just hot right now? Like you, no, you I think, think this is. I think this is a turn of the page for him. I think we're we're watching a kid that's going to be a superstar next year. Wow! Like I could see him scoring thirty plus goals next year. Like he, he just looks good. He obviously he put on the weight in the off season. He's not getting pushed around as much. Yeah. He's playing physical in front of the net, crashing the net, getting in the corner to dig a lot more pucks out this year. Yeah, and he looks like he is going to be be a stud for this team. Nick, is he talking crazy? No, he's. This is no. Uh, God, what was the uh, Edmondson? Is uh, no Raymond is no, no. Axel is, is Macarish. Yeah, Axel yeah. Oh, is oh, oh, oh. Although Axel, I've been uh, seeing some highlights today. Bro, man, I'm the fucking the telling you, like, that's, how he, that's how he plays hockey. It's not, I'm not saying he's the second coming to Kale McCarr. I'm saying he's Macarish. Yeah, maybe I'll get some highlights to show to uh, for Chris for the end of the show to go out with. But uh, I mean, Raymond, sixty three points. 77 games like leads the team in points yeah i mean he's definitely putting up 80 plus points next year i can say that confidently and then obviously when larkin isn't in the lineup it's kind of harder for other guys to step up because you have to deal with so much more attention but razor's been able to do it and you've seen him make plays that he just simply wasn't making last year so i think i mean it's easy to expect another big step at this point from lucas raymond to be a fucking superstar yeah. Yeah. It's fucking sick. I love Raymond. I've always dog, man. I love him since he, like. He's got a little, he's got a little brother in him somewhere. He's got a little brother. <laughs> yeah, he does. I'm just saying. He's, he's got it in him. I, you can't tell me he don't. His dad's got to look into some things. I'm just saying. I don't know what the milkman looked like over there. But the daddy better find out. <laughs> milkman don't care. I don't know this free pussy on every doorstep. Yeah. It's honestly. Um, nah, I'm, I'm hyped for Raymond. Um, I hope, I'm hoping that's the truth, too. I believe it. I believe it too, actually, because you guys aren't the only ones to say it. Mm-hmm. Not that I don't believe anything you guys say, but just like it's, com- it? it's coming from more than just you guys. It's coming more from more than just like Red Wings fans. Like yeah. you hear the TNT crew talk about it. Like everyone's kind of big on on Raymond, what he's been doing. You see how he's been playing, man. He's playing with confidence. He's playing with aggression, and he's he looks like it. Like he's he's had those flashes. You know, his rookie year, he had the flashes of where it's like, oh shit, dude, if he can do that on a regular basis pretty damn sweet yeah. he's been doing it on a regular basis this year to where he looks like one of the best guys on the ice whenever he's out there so yeah, i'm hoping to be honest with you too Smitty, i kind of agree with you i think everybody would agree with you that like your odds against the bruins and rangers aren't great yeah but i just even for like guys like evidson and Ray, I mean, literally actually everybody on the team outside of obviously the vets like mm-hmm. uh like like kane but i want them to get the taste of, of the playoff hockey yes. like, i want them to get a taste of the atmosphere be huge. let them know what it is like where you need to be to compete at that level and and how often you gotta keep on that intensity that's why i'd kind of rather see the rangers honestly just get that ass whooped just, just get yeah just get fucking destroyed like the body. like i i don't think you'd win either way but the physical play that the rangers would play with is different than the bruins that would be like real fucking playoff hockey of of the rangers just 
being monsters out there. So that would be more of a learning situation in my mind. Yeah, yeah. that's a scary matchup. I don't want to. I mean, I want to think about playoff hockey, but uh, yeah. against the Rangers, the Rangers are so that, good, dude. Yeah, that they, they are such a good team. Yeah, no doubt. I would definitely rather see Boston, but this is what it's all about. Five games left, fellas. Let's win some games, make the playoffs, you know, not just back in. You know, let's go in confidently. Uh, That's what it's all about. That's the only way you're going to make this playoff is fucking marching in because of how tight it is right now. Eight points swing your next two games. Got to win them both. You have to. All right, when we go to break, talking about a little bit bit of Detroit Lions. Uh, Obviously, we know Brad Holmes is pretty aggressive when it comes to players he wants. I want to know what players you guys would be aggressive about Mm. and more. (laughs) But after, he tells us about Guardian Alarm. Guardian Alarm. Guardian Alarm offers you customized solutions from real experts. Their professional technicians take the time to recommend security and automation solutions specific to your needs. They also have 24-7 professional monitoring. You can call them anytime, day or night. No, Guardian Alarm team member will stay on the phone as long as needed. And, of course, they have technology backed by people. Your safety and security deserves technology. It's been proven to work. And people who have been proven to care. So call them at 1-800-STAY-OUT. That's 1-800-STAY-OUT. And let them know Woodward Sports sent you. Walk into any Lady Jane's haircuts for men for an award-winning haircut experience from one of our talented stylists. Enjoy a precision haircut, hot lather neck shave, scalp and neck massage, and a hot towel treatment to top it off. Enter for your chance to win the $50,000 Perfect Bracket Challenge. With more than 25 Metro Detroit locations, there's always a Lady Jane's near you. Lady Jane's Haircut for Men open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. And with the first pick in the 2024 media draft, Detroit selects Woodward Sports. Thank you for making us the number one digital network in Detroit. Save the date. There's over a thousand giveaways at Dispo Dispensary this 420 at all Dispo locations. Find the closest one near you. Visit DispoShops.com. Get it in store. Get it delivered to your doorstep. Again, this DispoShops.com. Save the date. 420, baby. And I love the I love the Bob Seeger talk in the chat, by the way. Bob's a goat. Flannel doesn't like Bob Seeger. Remember that. Yeah, that's. You need crazy. another reason to hate Flannel. He doesn't like Bob Seeger. Does he really not like Bob Seeger? He's not like Bob Seeger. Like, like you're trolling a little bit. No, I'm serious. Doesn't like Flannel him or says he's overrated. Does not like Bob Seeger. He said he sucks. Ah, uh, all right. Now I know you're trolling. All right. He um, likes Bob Dylan. I think we all believe that. Uh, <laughs> no more Bob Dylan impressions from you. Oh well, there we come around. <laughs> yeah, we got a draft pick today. I right, was serious. Stop. And then you say, hey, how you doing? How you been from around the way? There's an eclipse in the sky. Don't look at it with your eyes or they might cry. That's what, that's literally what Bob Dylan sounds like. Like, that is a perfect Bob Dylan impression. You can't, you can't say you have a perfect impression. I can't, because that's exactly what he sounds like. And then you say, how you been? And I say, great. I can't, I guess so. Good job, bud. I'm proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, back to the NFL. Yeah. We're not back to the NFL. Let's jump into the NFL. Uh, I think we've been on record, at least I know that I have, that I think Brad Holmes probably going to be a little bit aggressive in this draft. I believe his version of going all in is going out there and obtaining some of these uh, guys on the upper echelon of this first round, which means I, I see him making a move. I see him making a move. I believe and hope he will make a move uh, up in this year's NFL draft to grab a guy that can immediately impact this defense specifically. But is there any specific players that you thought about in that scenario that you would want? If they're, if, if this is happening, if they're moving up to to draft someone, it's going to be an edge rusher. That, that's what it is. That's what I'm sold on. If, they, if Brad Holmes is moving up in the first round to get a player to bring to this team, it's going to be one of those edge rushers, whether it be Verse, whether it be Latu, whoever it is, that's what it's going to be because that's the position where you need the most instant impact. I think that's the only position on this team 
where you need a guy that's going to be an instant impact from this draft. So if you are going to give up assets to keep adding depth, to move up and grab someone to hopefully be that guy, it's going to be one of the top edge rushers. And out of them all, honestly, I think Jared Verse would be the best. Best, like, that's like you, you best in class? Best, or like, that's who you think available? Yeah. Best available. I think he's going to fall down a little bit. I think, I think Latu is going to go higher than most people expect. I think he's going to go, go closer to 10 than he is 20. Yeah. And so I think Verse is going to fall a little bit. So if you move up to 17, something like that, late teens to get a Jared Verse, I think it would be best bang for your buck. And I think he's going to be one of the, like, a top two edge rusher in this draft. I'm totally in alignment with you when it comes to, like, edge rusher. Although, obviously, I think you look at this defense, and as much as I have faith in Amik Robinson, like, just contributing to the defense, I never really saw it as, like, the outside cornerback for sure. Mm -hmm. I thought I saw him moving into that nickel hybrid spot and then maybe having a little bit of burns back there at safety, which Dan Campbell said, too. We're seeing him play a lot more safety this year. But I would just – I think you look at this defense and where you want to move up is that position there specifically. But we all know by now Brad Holmes doesn't do it by needs. He doesn't buy BPA, and I'm with you. I think if you look at first defensive players off the board in this year's draft class, you're looking at one of those defensive ends in my mind, whether it's Dallas Turner, whether it's Jared Verse. I think there could be an argument for Latu Latu too. Me personally, I think Dallas Turner probably goes first. Yeah, for sure. But almost like at a point where it's like just too rich for – He's going to go top ten. Brad, yeah, yeah. yeah I, seem, I don't think he makes it past eight at the Falcons right there. I think yeah. It just makes perfect sense the way I addressed the quarterback this year. They got a few more weapons too. Like I don't think they're grabbing any other offensive pieces unless like one of those like top tier, top three receivers like dropped in them. Mm-hmm. I think he's gone, and I'm with you. I agree. Handshake deal on Jared Verse. And for some reason, if it does happen – I'm strongly convinced. I'm kind of just throwing this out there. It's spaghetti against the wall. Pick number 12, uh, just because it's where we've been the yeah. past few years. He likes Once, that pick. It's done yeah. well for him. Which is my, was my favorite number growing up. Fun fact. But, yeah, I think, obviously, Jameson Williams right there at 12. It just feels like a sweet spot in the draft where you're, like, mid-tier. We don't have to give up like, too much to, to move up. Guys that fell out of the top 10. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, because there's going to be a quarterback run there, too. You got to think about it, too. Like, if the Vikings don't move up, if they don't have to move up, I guess, to grab J.J. or whoever it may be they're looking to acquire. I mean, there's, again, one of those top ten guys at all positions outside of quarterback for sure is going to be there right around 12. And whether that's, like you said, Latu and or Verse, I'm here for both of them. I did, as much as I, I mansplained that my man crush on Latu Latu, I think it was last week or the week before, I did watch some tape over this weekend against uh, Fashanu, I think it was. I don't remember which. It was one of the top end, like, tackle prospects. Yeah. Troy Fatanu. He got worked. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie. Lots of lots of that is. I yeah. mean, like, Verse has the bag. That, that's what yes. attracts me to Verse so much. On top of his ath- raw athleticism and, and what he can do, he's got that pass rush bag of different moves, counters, and different things that he can go. So if he gets caught, you know, he's he's not ready for the physicality or, or there's a bigger offensive so lineman than, than him. He can spin off and do different things. That's why I'm with Lots of Lots of. I think Lots of Lots of has the deepest bag out of this draft class, but like, he doesn't have that oomph to like just bully a guy if yeah. he needed to. And Verse has that. Yeah. He has that on top of like being able to work again, the bag he already has, mm-hmm. on top of what he'll learn from Aiden Hutchinson or and or Terrell Williams, I guess yes. more importantly. So I, I think I think Verse would be the guy. I don't know if it's a pipe dream. I don't know what the chat's saying. I don't even have that screen up. Is it is it my my pipe dreaming, Nick, thinking that Verse could be a pick for the Detroit Lions? I mean, it just depends on how greedy we want to get with our future. Cause I'm down to throw out uh, next year's first if we want to try to get up to 10. I, th- I think my guy would be Dallas Turner specifically. I think he would be a perfect fit with Hayden Hutchinson. Plus, you know Brad loves his Alabama guys. Talking about Jameer Gibbs, J-Mo, Brian Branch. He knows the tree and he's gone to it before. But I think a little bit less scaled back. And maybe Brad Holmes has dialed in a guy it's got to be an offensive lineman to provide this team the depth for the future moving forward with a guy like Frank Ragnow. We don't know how long he's going to play on this Detroit Lions team mm-hmm. with injuries in the past. You think about a Taylor Decker going up to his contract year. You think about a guy in a one-year deal that we brought in that's a pro bowler, which I'm happy with Zeitler, but it's not. you don't have that security moving forward that you do with studs on rookie deals. So I'm leaning more Jackson Powers Johnson, maybe giving up like a fourth or like a third to go up top of the 20s. That's where I think he would fall down to. 
So I would lean more offensive line on this one. I still have a lot of faith in James Houston personally. But if this team wants to remain elite offensively, we have to protect Jared Goff and we have to be able to run the ball. And I think protecting that offensive line moving forward is the key to doing that. Um, I can see that too. Yes, if offensive lineman is one that they see perceived as like a top tier of the class and he's right there within reach and they haven't already made that move to 12 or 15, wherever it may be to grab one of those guys on the defense side of the ball, that makes perfect sense. I think for anybody within that, that portion there, because you're really not giving up much. And to the people in the Wilbur Sports chat, more specifically, my guy, Cousin Keys, shout out. Thank you for joining the show. Shout out. But uh, he says, Easy has no respect for, for foreplay when it comes to simulating a solid team. Brother, Brad Holmes. You already have draft. a solid team. Yeah, I already have a solid team, first and foremost. Secondly, Brad Holmes moved up to 12 once before to grab a wide receiver, mm -hmm. which I, I think the argument is you, you can have, grab one of those guys. I mean, Amara St. Brown was grabbing the fourth round. A Tyreek Hill, fourth round guy. Uh... Antonio Brown, fifth-round guy. You can grab those guys all across the draft boards. He moved up to 12 to grab Jameson Williams. So for you to portray this as me being impatient or not having like any, anything like that, it's, it's a move that Brad Holmes has already made. And last year, he made multiple moves up in the draft. One to grab Brodick Martin. One to grab a quarterback. Huh? Well, one to grab a quarterback and Hendon Hooker. Like, Brad Holmes is aggressive in the draft. It's just how he – again, if you're going to go all in, if you perceive this team as going all in, which, which I do, I think there's a window, depending on Ben Johnson's true – intentions like staying or becoming a head coach, then you're going to go in all now. And the best way to do it, in my mind, is through the draft. Mm -hmm. Although there's a little bit of a roll of dice of like who you're getting as a prospect, Brad Holmes just so happens to be out cold. Normally works out. Yeah. Normally works out when Brad Holmes makes that decision. So, yeah, this is – we've seen him do both in the first round. We've seen him move up and move down in the first round. So I'm not surprised if at anything that Brad Holmes would do. And this – like you said, man, the the – amount of talent that's going to go up there, you're going to see these edge rushers fall because of the quarterbacks and the wide receivers and the other guys that are going to go ahead of them. Not even mention like a guy like Brock Bowers who's, gonna, who's been falling down draft boards. Seeing Brock Bowers get mocked at like 20 is crazy to me. But there is going to those, – those edge rushers are going to fall right to the range where – a team that really wants one can move up and grab him, and we've seen Brad Holmes do it before, so it's definitely not crazy. And, and one more, especially when he did do it, was his second year as general manager, a point where you, you, you argue more mm -hmm. to be like patient and, and build it the right way. He gave up three picks to go to number 12 to grab a wide receiver. Yeah. What are you guys talking about? Anakin and, 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 and Cousin Keys. That, that's, that's like the, the time you want to be patient. This <laughs> is the beginning of the rebuild. No, he did it in the beginning, the second year drafting. This is not anything out like the – you guys, don't be surprised when it happens. Yeah. And, and if you want to talk like that, Better, I better see you in the chat being pissed off about it when it does happen. Yeah, and you guys saying there's no point. What the fuck do you mean there's no point? We were 10 minutes away from a Super Bowl last year. That's the point. The entire point is to go to the Super Bowl and win the Super Bowl. That's the point is getting that one player to push you over the edge. Like, we don't need to fill 20 holes on this team anymore, guys. Like, this isn't the team from two years ago. You don't need a draft class of eight guys. That's not, that's not a thing for the Lions anymore. We don't need that. We need impact players. We need those couple pieces that'll push you over the edge, not eight guys that'll fill in and do well. So, yeah, that's the point. The point is getting great players to help you win a Super Bowl. Um, yeah, I mean, I just I think that's these are wild, wild, wild replies, especially of the guy who already moved up to grab wide receiver beforehand. Need, need blue chip guys on this team, specifically that defense. So I do like your guys' idea of going up and getting that D lineman. We do need depth at offensive line in this mm -hmm. draft at some point, just moving forward for security reasons. Um, if we don't do that in the first round, I am okay with it. If we do it early Cooper in the Bay second Bay. or the third. Bay Bay for days. I'm down with it. But If the Lions adding, draft Cooper Bay Bay, I'm just saying nobody better question my trench knowledge ever again. Ever again. Because I've been preaching him for months. I think he'll be good regardless of where he goes. I think, I think he'll be valued. Oh, he's going to be a stud. I'm a I'm big Cooper Bebe fan. Yeah, I just think these are the guys that I want to acquire if they move up. That's, that's all I'm saying. Aaron, I also, I mean, you, would you be surprised if they did it for a corner? One of those cornerbacks? One of the quarterbacks? Corner. Cornerbacks? Yes. Yeah, that well. I would be because the cornerbacks you'll see where you are, they're still pretty good. Like if Kool-Aid falls there or TJ Tampa or Renardo Green, guys that'll be in the places you can pick without moving up are yeah. – are still pretty good. 
Plus, like at that point, I feel like you're drafting a guy that's not like again. If you're doing that, you're grabbing a guy that you probably feel could start this year right away. And, and those cornerbacks, I, I don't know as much as again, I, I like them as prospects. Yeah. I don't know if they start on this defense right away or if you're comfortable yeah. starting them on this defense right away. And Aaron B says, uh, so you're saying go all in for next season, Spenny? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Your I've expect- been my that. expectations for the Detroit Lions next year are to win a Super Bowl. If you don't win the Super Bowl, it's a disappointing season. Yeah. Flat and- out. Like like the Brad Holmes said it himself. That cute shit is dead. That oh, it's a nice story shit is dead. That's not the Lions anymore. The Lions are contenders. The Lions are NFC elite. The Lions are Super Bowl contenders. So if you don't win the Super Bowl, it is a disappointing season. That's the that's where you guys wanted to be, right? That's the table you want to sit at. Lions those are the waters out. you want to swim in. Well, those are the expectations. If you don't win a Super Bowl, it's a disappointing season, flat out. I, I we we got our first playoff win in, in 30 years. That's awesome. We got our first division championship in how many years? That's awesome. That shit doesn't matter anymore. Now it's just win the Super Bowl. Or the season was disappointing. And again, not again, I actually haven't made this point. Maybe I have in the past, but if you want to go all in and Jared Goff is a part of that equation, meaning you have to re-sign him here shortly, like coming as soon as next year, then the all in is surrounding him with rookie deals that you can afford on the team while you're paying him the 49, 50, whatever it may end up being uh, the cost of Jared Goff to be the quarterback of this team. That, that, that is the all in version of Brad Holmes. I mean, that, that's how you build a team around a quarterback that you're paying that much damn money. You just surround around these, these rookie deals. I, I think a, a brilliant way to do it, too, is, again, if you're hitting on the draft picks, obviously, that, that's a big part of it. But, like, the Texans have built them, themselves up pretty fucking nice. And they give up to Sean Watson, not for other players directly, but for draft picks. And I just feel like that's how Brad Holmes feels, too. He doesn't like shelling out these big deals. He's not going to go all in by signing a free agent. He's not going to go on by acquiring Legereus Sneed free agent slash guy you're going to sign a big deal. He's going to go all in by acquiring guys that he believes in and can control on rookie deals, giving a fifth-year option out of the first round and or just a rookie deal in general where you're, you're costing your team less for premium talent there. That's just how, his, that's how I believe his version of all-in is. Yeah. But we'll continue this conversation more, maybe even open up the phone lines when we get back, but not before Spain tells you about Planet Fitness. Let me tell you about Planet Fitness. Planet Fitness is the home of the judgment-free zone where anyone, and we mean anyone, can feel comfortable and work on their fitness goals. It's going to be a rough one for you boy today. I'll tell you that right now. I'm going to be feeling it on that treadmill. But let me tell you, at Planet Fitness, you'll experience a squeaky clean gym that has tons of equipment, a full body workout in 30 minutes, and all memberships include fitness training. You get all that for just $10 a month, no commitment. No matter where you are, there's a Planet Fitness close by, more than 50 in Metro Detroit and thousands more throughout the world. Planet Fitness. Your fitness is essential. The game is one in the trenches, and our big fellas don't mess around. The Woodward Heavyweights on Woodward Sports. Stop searching for a vehicle and start finding one. Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac makes it easy. We harness the power of multiple dealerships and own the biggest selection of GM brands in the area to get you the car you need. With the Les Stanford Group, you'll have access to four different dealerships, providing you with more makes, more models, and more choices. We're connected to more than 1,000 vehicles, and with so many high-quality CPO vehicles available, you'll find new car quality at pre-owned prices. You can start and end your search at lesstanford.com today. You, you smell that? That's Brad Holmes cooking. And the off-season smells good. Woodward Sports. Give your pet the best. Premier Pet Supply is hands down Michigan's best pet store. Same prices and all the conveniences of the online and big box retailers with one major difference. They are family and locally owned and operated for 30 plus years. Over 60 brands of food with nutrition experts to help you. Same day, local curbside home delivery. Premier Pet Supply, give your pet the best. www.premierpetsupply.com. www. What up, and welcome back to World Heavyweights Live on sports.com. I'm your boy Easy Joe, my guy Spin Morax. You know, Chris, up? Nicholas Koloff. Smash that like button, be a friend, tell a friend. It's me. Share the stream, please. I got a. I'm recording an episode tonight. Huh? First time where speaks. Shout out. It's going to be a passionate one. All right. It's going to be a passionate one. All right. One Piece was crazy good this week. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. And I'm about to light motherfuckers up. Um, Steve Wilds downplaying the uh, acquisitions by the Texans, saying people are acting like the Super Bowl contenders now. I don't agree. Speedy, you're at the flag holder. Yeah, they are 1,000% Super Bowl contenders. You saw what they did last year on top of what they have added in free agency with guys like Daniil Hunter, Danico Autry to go on that defensive line with Will Anderson. You add, obviously, Stefan Diggs and Joe Mixon to put into that offense with guys like, I don't know, Tank Dell, 
Uh, who else? Uh, Nico Collins, Noah Brown, and C.J. Stroud at the helm. Like, they arguably have the best offense in the NFL right now. And that defense, they have one of the best defensive lines in the NFL right now. Like, their rushing combo of Will Anderson and Daniil Hunter is insane. If you told me that is your favorite one-two punch at edge rusher, I wouldn't be mad at you. Personally, I think it's the Giants. But if you're saying it's the, it's the Texans, I'm not going to be mad at you. And, like, on top of that, it's the Raiders there, too. Another year of growth for their young guys like Will Anderson and C.J. Stroud and another draft class to put in that, like, the Texans are going to be a fucking problem next year. Yeah, Daniel Hunter and, and uh, Will Anderson alone. <laughs> and Danico Autry. And Danico Autry. Yeah. Yeah. Because oh, did they end up signing a defensive tackle? I don't think they did. Um, I think they lost one. Because, yeah, because yeah, the guy they lost ended up going to uh, the Bengals, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I can't think of who his name was off the top of my head. But then again, we talk about the Devondre Sweat stuff. You got guys that are going to eat on these one-on-one battles. Well, why not grab you Devondre Sweat in that fourth round? They're the ones who drafted Larry Tunsil, right? Or was it Dolphins? The Dolphins? No, they, no, they didn't draft. No, right Texas now they got uh, Fakusai Foley. And Danico Autry as their defensive tackles. Yeah, I think they grab a big guy. No, I mean, look, I guess I'd understand you have the standpoint of, hey, let's go see on the field. But, like, odds are probably in their favor that they'd be pretty fucking good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there obviously could be a sophomore slump. But the thing is with, with T.J. Stroud is oh. this is why I had, had, this is why I had so, admir- so much admiration for that playground style of, of play when something gets broken down with quarterbacks like that. It's because it wasn't like all X and O's. It was like him turning chicken shit into yeah. chicken soup quite often. And they added Aziz Al Sayer to go with Henry Toro to- 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 yeah, yeah. to- to- as their linebacking core. <laughs> Jimmy <laughs> Ward and Jalen Petrie as their safety combination Jeez. with Derek Stingley out there, dude. Like, yeah. they got a fucking squad, bro. It's insane. Who signed Eric Armstead again? Eric Armstead. Uh, Someone paid him like a stupid deal. I was very surprised to see. I can't it. remember. Uh, no. Was it the Colts? Or no? Let me look it up right now. It's just it's driving me crazy. Yeah, all I know is that, that I love the Texans, man. Jaguars. I, Jaguars. Yeah, I think the that's te- actually that might be like, I, Texans Lions Super Bowl would be fucking dope. Yeah. Uh they lost rankings. Yep. Yeah, they lost um, rankings. Listen, Grenard had a really good season last year. I think in part of Will Anderson being there, rankings being there, mm-hmm. he had great timing off the snap. I don't know that he's like a loss, especially when you acquired Daniel Hunter. Yeah, I can't. I don't. I don't know, Steve. I, that's your opinion, brother. You're. Uh, I just want to get everybody else's opinion on it too. I don't know if I uh, watched like that. Keys, well. the, Keys says Texans will 100 percent go as Stroud goes. If he has injury issues, they will be in the shits. Yeah. Mm. If any team loses their starting quarterback, they're not going to be great. Like, yeah. you can say that about anybody. If the Lions lose Jared Goff, it's not going to look so great. Hey, Joe, look what happened to the Bengals last year. Like, oh, Jake oh. Burr. Uh, yeah, I don't know. And Hooker. If anybody loses their starting quarterback, they're not going to have a great season. Yes, son, al about every team in, in the NFL. Oh. I watched Dune 2 finally, by the way. Fantastic movie. It's Phenomenal. coming back to IMAX pretty soon, too. Um, I can't wait for the third one. I probably should have waited and watched it on HBO. They're coming up the series, actually. It's going to be kind of like uh, what they're doing with Game of Thrones and the Dra- House of Dragons right now. Yeah. But the Dune version of it. All I know is Dune Messiah is already confirmed. Yes. They work on the scripts. Yeah. How did you stream awesome. As we speak. How did you stream it? Huh? Did you run no, I went. You went? I went with my cousin Giovanni. Shout out Giovanni. Um, expectations for Detroit Lions defense this year is what's on the sheet next, Benny. We got six minutes in this one, though. You want me? You want to bullshit a little bit? Or you yeah, want to say? We can bullshit a little bit. Okay. You want to do the offense first thing? Because that one's kind of quick. Yeah. That one's like, come on. I mean, the expectations really, what it's been, right? I mean, is anybody expecting a step back from what we were? I'm expecting a step up. Yeah. Yes. Talk to him. Rushing. I'm expecting top three this year without a question. Yeah. Gibbs, Demont, completely. Well, over- deep. Just completely owning the run game every single time out. Yeah, the rushing. I mean, the other part of that, too, is like we're talking about the Texans guys. They're your two guys taking steps up. I think you'd argue they're probably the second best draft class last year. Maybe you could argue for the first. We're for sure in the conversation, too. And our rookies are also taking step ups as well. One of those guys being Jameer Gibbs. For sure seeing him take a step up. The run, the run offense in itself, 
I think Jonah Jackson probably was a better run blocker than Zeitler, but Zeitler a better pass blocker than Jonah. Yeah. But either way, I think it'll, it'll even itself out. Uh, ben Johnson clearly knows what the fuck he's doing when it comes to developing a run game, a run scheme. And I think by itself, shout out to Graham Glasgow, by the way, real one. But the combination of him and Penny Sewell. Graham that, Glasgow is a real one. He is a real one. Actually, there's no, because Zeitler's going to be playing the right guard. Regardless, though, I think the run game will be straight as fuck. And again, you're getting year two of Jameer Gibbs. And you got the power of friendship on the left side, dude. Like, yeah, you do. I love anime. Shout out to Jujutsu Kaisen, which <laughs> power of friendship doesn't mean shit in Jujutsu Kaisen. People get murked. But that left side of the line, dude, that is the power of friendship. With Deck, Graham, and Frank, Those are, that's the wolf pack, man. So I, I'm so excited to see this offensive line cook next year, man. They're going to be so good. Hank Fraley, I, I've said it multiple times, he's the best offensive line coach in the NFL and having these guys to work with, you add a pro bowler in Zeitler to fill in for Jonah Jackson, who you know, Jonah's great. Don't get me, when Jonah's healthy, he's fantastic. He's a pro bowl caliber guard when healthy. But you got a guy who doesn't miss games and who is arguably the best pass blocking guard not named Quentin Nelson in the NFL. So I, I, I love it, man. And I expect them to be a top three offense in the NFL next year. I expect Jameer Gibbs to be over 1,100 yards rushing. I expect this team to just be lights out. Now, I have a question because we know when it comes to running backs, the, the tread wears, and they take a lot of abuse. I think yeah. David Montgomery, one of the guys, taking a lot of abuse. A couple of injuries last year, mm-hmm. uh, too. Do you think there's any possibility he takes a step back? I, I, wanted, I found myself wondering that this offseason. Monty? Yeah. yeah. I, but not – I think he takes a step back production-wise because Jameer eclipses him. Shout out Eclipse Day. Shout out Eclipse Day. But, you know, no – Let better. him cut. I think Jameer – takes the step forward, so Montgomery takes a step back production-wise. I think he has the same impact of being the hammer, you know, being the thunder to Jameer Gibbs lightning, but Jameer is what this offense is going to predicate on when it comes to the running game because how explosive he is, how good he is, and he is blossoming while I don't want to say Montgomery's wilting. He's just he, – we know what David Montgomery is. He's a fantastic back in the NFL. He's a 1,000-yard all-purpose back every single year in the NFL, and I think he'll – Get to a thousand all-purpose yards again next year, but Jameer is going to be that guy in this offense next year. Yeah, I can see that too. I, I see it either way. A uh, combination of, I guess, the, the two of those things. I think, I think it happens offensively. I guess another improvement I can see happening. Believe it or not, um, I think Jared Goff, as long as Zeitler can stay healthy. Uh, again, I said it earlier. I think that Zeitler is a lot better pass blocker than previously with Jonah Jackson. I, I just, I think that's going to work itself out tremendously, especially knowing like. When those weak moments he did have, a lot of that pressure was coming from the interior. And again, I think you watch back the tape, it would be Jonah Jackson in those situations, and or obviously sometimes some backup guards there too. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, you saw him get – he did he did all right against the, the, the 49ers. I mean, for the most part, a lot of those balls were getting knocked out of the, the players' hands. Not like Jared Goff wasn't getting the ball there in time. Obviously, the drops by uh, you know, Reynolds throwing there too. But I think he had a lot more time to be um, surgical. I guess it is at this point in this offense. I mean, year three of him doing this, yeah. we saw what year two looked like last year. Like, I think that the turnover stuff is going to continue to go in his favor just because of how well he knows. Like, you can no longer blitz Jared Goff like you used to be able to. I mean, you can, but just know it's not going to be as effective as previously before. Before, you could blitz him. He'd get all frantic. He could do some dumb shit. I mean, he'll do that if he's pressured regardless. But at this point, if you're sending extra, like, extra guys from coverage down to, to sack him, he knows where his receivers are. He knows he's supposed to be guarding over there. If you're coming from a certain place, he's going to make the throw. We saw it multiple times last year. It's no longer a weakness of his just because of how like, in tune he is with this Ben Johnson offense. Shout out to Ben Johnson once more. And shout out to Jared Goff, I guess, for doing his part in that too. But I, I, think, uh, I, I think he'll so. be – I'll put this just as efficient, if not better, as long as we get uh, some consistency up, up front. At the, in the interior, I should say, with Zeitler. So, so the one thing that – you guys haven't mentioned, you kind of just barely mentioned it, is receiving. And, you know, we know with, with, with Josh Reynolds leaving, I know Nick's fired up about that. But <laughs> I, I I look at this. Are you guys just assuming Brad Holmes is going to fix that through the remainder of free agency slash draft, or are you just not at all worried about it? Like, No, they're definitely going to fix that in in the draft, I do believe. Like, I, I'm, I'm pretty confident with what Donovan Peoples-Jones can bring to this offense – in a wide receiver three or four mark. Like, I, I expect Jamison Williams to step up and take the load of what Josh Reynolds did, plus some, next year. And I think if you're pe- you could pencil Donovan Peoples-Jones, if he is your, your ex, your big guy, your, your wide receiver three, 
to go for the season on, you know, 600 yards and a couple touchdowns. And, and that's what all you could need out of him. And I, I feel like he could do that comfortably. He's a very talented wide receiver. But I do think they grab someone in the draft to lessen the load on him and to kind of issue into that X role. Yeah, Brad Holmes said at the owners' meeting that they got literally A pluses on the entire free agency of everybody they wanted to acquire mm-hmm. outside of Jonah, but that they had feeling that was going to go that way regardless because they, they couldn't get it done before free agency. But the other piece of it they missed was Josh Reynolds. Um, that would have been the, the completion of things they priority number ones on their list. It didn't get done. So I don't believe that uh, DPJ will be, I guess, uh, Lisa Al Qaib when it comes to like, you know, uh, the Lisa Messiah. Al-Qaib. But I, th- I think they do. They grab somebody in the draft and split time, and or maybe he ends up being a stud. Silence. Dude, how hype is that That shit scene? was lit. That that, shit was that's lit. my favorite scene. By the way, he had to do that, too, because, like, she could have she fucked the whole thing yeah. up. Yeah. He said, uh, silence. She yeah. said, abomination. Yeah. And, and, and then the, the, the knife fight. I love this. The duel. Sick. Where there's just no And they had the, they had the audio. Uh, silhouettes, too. Yeah. And yeah. you're just hearing the knives clash. Yeah. And then the fucking speech he gives. What, before? When he, the, I am Paul Atreides, Duke of Arrakis. Yeah. He puts the ring on in front of all of the people. Yeah. In the, in the little, like, town hall center. Where the, and he, he's telling, you had a grandma who lost her eye. And, and they're all like, Yeah, oh, I need someone to explain that part to me. How did he, oh, because you can see the past. Because you can see the past. Them. Yeah. yeah. That's and right. that's, that gave me goosebumps. He can look at him and do that now? I said, imagine, I thought of, like, a funny SNL skit to that. Like, he's doing that. He's up there. He's telling everybody, you know, their past and futures. He looks at the guy. He's like, you have gay thoughts in the shower. And he's like, <laughs> bro. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> that would be a funny SNL one. But, we, he did. He did uh, one of the, the South people, he was like, you, you like draining the, the blood or the water from dead people or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, God. Yeah, dude. He sh- that, that shit gave me goosebumps when he stands up and makes that speech, dude. That shit's fucking awesome. He's an Agaib. He's an Agaib. We're going to get into the defense expectations next. But first, let me tell you about lady jane's awesome is when a guy can be a guy and get an amazing haircut that's lady jane's haircuts for men stop in sit back relax and let one of lady jane's talented stylists make you look and feel great walk in anytime seven days a week lady jane's it's wicked awesome congratulations to the real coach of the year motor city dan campbell just put your head down and go to work it's about to be fun man it's about to be fun Woodward sports at work and at home. We're there with smarter security solutions, featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm, we protect Michigan. We don't like to brag that we are the toughest sports network in Detroit. But we do have a guy named Darren McCarty on our side. Woodward Sports. Soroki's Nashville Hot really Chicken like is back. Like featuring that. crispy, fresh, chicken. crispy Nashville Hot Chicken fresh tenders, crispy. Nashville Hot Chicken Sandwich, Nashville Hot Loaded Fries, and their newest Nashville Hot, hot Pizza. Loaded. This limited time offer is a must try. Visit Soroki's.com mm. to place your order online or stop at one of their 11 convenient so- locations Sorokis. for all your needs. Come enjoy the delicious heat while you, kill, while you still can. Soroki's.com. What up, and welcome back to World Heavyweights Live on WordSports.com. I'm your boy Easy. Join my guys, Spimo Rex, Young Chris, Nicholas Koloff. Let's go. Smash the light button if you haven't Smish. already, mate. It's very much appreciated. Smash. Uh, we're going to now talk about our defensive expectations for Detroit Lions. Over at Eduardo O'Neill says, uh, my, defense expect- my defensive expectations is that we aren't in the 20s anymore. I'll take 15th at this point. Spimo Rex, BG Sports. And I'm with you. I'm with you, too. I'm with you. And, I, and that's kind of like where I'm going with this take is that – I think for sure you'd say this defense improved. I just don't know. I'm not. Mm, I'm just not willing to go crazy with it. I, I think am, I'm going to go a little crazy. I don't. I just not convinced of the Marcus Davenport. If he's there consistently, I think obviously the potential is higher. But it's just he hasn't been that his entire career, and, and especially more so as of late. I did not like the, the contract he was given, considering that, especially when like that six and a half million. Oh, it's not much. For, well, guess what? The guy that you was like your A target for wide receiver to bring back was Josh Reynolds. 
that's essentially what he kind of got minus like the guarantee or I'm sorry incentives to return to Denver or not return to Denver but to go to Denver yeah if you weren't want to pay that guy that but he's a, he's a big part of your offense but you you paid to the guy who was again hardly available I wasn't comfortable with that and I, that's why I think they should move up or I, no I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep it that way they should move up and grab if they can Jared Verse specifically specifically him. But you talk crazy. I am talking crazy. I think they're going to have the best rushing defense in the NFL. Start it there. The number one rushing defense in the NFL. Oh, yeah. And I think they That's have crazy. They were I think they have year. an upper half passing defense in the NFL. So a top 15, we'll say, passing defense in the NFL. So that makes them a top 10 defense in my mind. I think that's what's going to happen. I do. I, to be safe, I would say top 15, like Eduardo said in the chat. I can, yeah. I can vibe with that. But my expectations are top 10. Because I think you're going to, like I said, you'll have the best. You had the number two rushing defense in the NFL last year, and you added one of the best rushing defenders in the mm-hmm. NFL to this team. So you will have the best rushing defense, number one rushing defense in the NFL, and a top 15 pass defense. So give me a top 10 defense for the Lions next year. I love it. I love it. I think obviously the return that uh, that form in terms of like run defense. I think we we're, we're gonna see it impact the most in terms of like making us a better defense is the red zone. We I hyped it up and I was wrong too last year the red zone defense because when I have to look at the numbers, I was dead ass wrong. Detroit Lions did not do well in the red zone against running teams, and that's because we're good schematically against the run. When it comes to like actually like winning your one on ones, just not having a sacrifice out there for it. We weren't, and that's why we got dominated in the red zone when, when teams running on us. With DJ Reader, that's not going to be the case. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a great piece out there, but I think it's the Green Light Podcast again. I know Chris Long spoke to Aline McNeil. Well, his other podcast partner went and did a film review on Aline McNeil uh, afterwards. He's going to be a dog next year, man, uh, along, along DJ Reader. Like, it's going to be – it's any football person will tell you this, right? Like, it's not just me being a Detroit Lions fan telling you this. Uh, there's a guy who commented on one of our reels is like, oh, a guy who got three and a half sacks, not going to be that big of an addition. But you don't understand football if that's the case. Yeah. Like, his purpose there is to just cause chaos, cause havoc. Eat man blocks. double teams, yeah, eat blocks. Like, that, that's what he's there for because you have a guy like Lee McNeil who's proven he can win on those one-on-one pass drops. If you listen to the, the podcast, he talks about – you know, losing that weight so he can come back with a more strategic plan in the next down or on a third down versus, like, trying to catch his breath and just be readily and available for there. Like, he has an actual, like, detailed pass rush plan now that he's in better shape. You have Aiden Hutchinson, who I'm, I'm assuming is going to take another rise in, in what he wants to be, and hopefully Davenport, again, that's the question. I saw a comment in the Wilbur Sports chat, though, regarding Houston. That's a huge guy to get back there. I, I don't question that as much. I mean, I guess you could because, like, what he did was truly insane. Like, to expect that again out of him maybe would be a little bit unfair, but at the same time, if you watch the film, like, he – it wasn't luck. And that's he, he was getting down and dirty. So Houston, I think the pass rush definitely improved. Houston and Davenport are guys that can win one on ones, and that's what we needed so much last year. We had fucking Charles Harris and Romeo Okwara and guys over there getting put in phone booths in one on one situations. James Houston and Marcus Davenport are two guys that can combine for one full season, and two guys that when they're out there on the field can win one on one matchups in pass rush situations. Yeah. So that's what you need. I think last year with Houston was a freak accident injury, and we all had super high expectations for him last season to pair with Aiden Hutchinson. I think we are all on the same page with that one. I do have faith in James Houston to be able to repeat somewhat of what he did in his first season where he had eight sacks in seven games. Like, those are just insane numbers. Mm -hmm. But with Aiden Hutchinson, Aleem McNeil, DJ Reader getting so much attention, if you just let Houston loose, I believe he will be successful in this league to be able to get to the quarterback as a specialist. And I said it before, you guys kind of called me crazy, but I said three guys on this D-line are going to get multiple or 10 or more sacks, and it starts with Hutchinson. I believe Houston is that guy if he remains healthy. And then with the addition of Reader, I think Aleem gets there as well. This defense, in my eyes, can be top 13 in total scoring defense. I don't know about the whole passing defense because I feel like we're going to be up in games often where other teams are going to pad their stats. So I don't know specifically on their passing defense, but I think top 13 total defense with the additions that were made to this defensive line, I think it'll help out our secondary tremendously. And I think we're going to be able to get to the quarterback like we haven't seen in the past. Which will help that pass uh, defense, like you said, too. Like, 
Um, in that film study, they're, again, breaking down Ali McNeil, there was a, a throw by Brock Purdy where he just sat there in the pocket and delivered it. Despite I, You guys might remember this play. It's when Ali McNeil cleaned his fucking clock. Yes. Had his cleats above his f- fucking head. Mm-hmm. It, was, it, was, it was dirty. Not dirty in the sense like actual dirty play. Like it, was just, it was like, it was sick. It was, it was, yeah, it was yeah. dope. It was a good hit. But, like, uh, it, again, that was a hell of a throw by Brock Purdy. Not every quarterback's going to be able to do that. That's where, like, you could start having conversation about Brock Purdy being more than just a plug-and-play guy. But, yeah, it's going to be a lot of those situations where, again, in, in, in fact, will help the pass defense in my eyes. And I think that's why you grab so many of those playmakers back there, uh, Meek Robinson, Brian Branch. I mean, once upon a time, C.J. G.J. was back there, obviously, too. But I feel that same way about Ufantu Milfanwu. I feel that way about Kirby Joseph. And, obviously, we know that Brian Branch has that, too. Carlton Davis, maybe not so much. But, again, your job in the day as a cornerback is to stop the ball from being caught. I'm not – interceptions are nice, and I love them every single time. I'll never turn an interception down ever, 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 ever. Yeah. However, your job in the day is to stop the cornerback from catching the ball. If that's what you're doing, I can't complain about you not getting interceptions. That's just like me. Yeah. It's like a spoiled kid mm-hmm. wanting more, you know. But I think if top ten anything, top ten scoring because of the DJ Reader acquisition. And, and, and having Carlson Davis out there, like Nick said, is position, a position. big thing is most <laughs> – Position. Listen. Excision. The um, – <laughs> The mo- most first options on plays are the number one wide receiver when you're looking at a passing play. Uh-huh. So whether it be Keenan Allen or, or Justin Jefferson or whatever. So if you've got Carlton Davis playing head up, face-to-face with that number one wide receiver, that quarterback can't just drop back and boom there because a lot of what you know Cam Sutton was doing was getting beat off rip by yeah. those number one wide receivers or playing off of those number one wide receivers. So the yeah. window was there. If everything breaks down early, you got the quick throw right there. If everything breaks down early now, you've got long, strong, dong, pause, it just rhymed, Carlton <laughs> Davis in the face of your number one receiver, so you can't make that throw right there without it being you know, a second thought. So that just gives the another half of a second for those edge rushers to get home. And that, that's all. How many times did we see Hutch right there? where that half second could have made the difference between him getting a pressure and him getting a sack. Yeah. And so I think he gets more of those this year, obviously. One of the more uh, random sources or plugs we have Child is... Gun guy, take your pants off. ...is with the Buccaneers organization. I, I see a couple of comments in here about uh, a former Bucks player. And I haven't read that article, by the way, Alan W. If you wouldn't mind, send that one to me on uh, X. But I, I, I know that uh, things are getting quite competitive there versus like who was going to be the DB1. Along with the contract, uh, yeah. they have uh, – uh, what's the other cornerback's name they had? Jamal Dean. Jamal Dean. Yeah. That uh, I feel like it's more of a competitive thing because, again, you go back to the quotes or conversations Dan Campbell had or even just the tape in itself. I mean, we had uh, all 22 films on here too. Shout out to Coach D on that one. But Dan Campbell said when we played them twice, by the way, we didn't throw his way for a reason. Yes. We, we're, we're well aware of it. And then beyond like just the game plan this year too, they're also familiar with him back from when they played – or coach of uh, New Orleans, yes. the same division, NFC South. So, like, I could see a player, you know, talking that shit. But I, I guess I'm not going to buy too much into it versus, like, again, what we've seen on film and what we're hearing from our coaches. Mm-hmm. And if you guys, again, have the respect of Brad Holmes, like, that, he gave up a third-round pick to grab him. So, I, I think that speaks. And a guy said, who called himself a cornerback now. Yeah. So, Self-proclaimed cornerback whisperer. So. I don't think he's locked down by any means. I'm not saying, like, any, you know. But he's much better than what we had out there. Oh, my God. So much better. Yeah. So, so, so he, much you know, better. He, he's not J- prime Jalen Ramsey, but yeah. it's a lot better than what we had out there last year. Man, if they can get a Jared verse. I mean, honest, God, even the Houston situation. Because yeah, we talk about, like, one yeah, if he's the real deal or not. Watch his tape, and it's the one-on-ones he's winning with Aleem McNeil, mm-hmm. DJ Reader, mm-hmm. Aiden Hudson. Mm-hmm. You're not going to – you can't afford to put two people on James Houston. You can't afford to have that extra protection on him. No. Nope. And he's he kind of violent, too. Remember, he got in a nasty hit on Brock Purdy in that NFC uh, yeah. Conference Championship and game, too. He almost ripped Trevor Lawrence's knee off of his body. Dude, Trevor Lawrence, could have been a flag, if Just, honest with you. Justin Fields yeah, on yeah. that fumble play yeah. when he got shot out of a cannon. Like, he has elite speed coming off the edge. I got big things planned for James Houston. I think it was just a freak injury, and he bounces back this third year I form. I agree. Yeah, because it happened on special teams, too. Yeah. It's not he, he injured himself in, in his regular like work not around. Playing, not playing in special teams ever again. Yeah, he shouldn't. Get him out. It's part of the game. He's going to. Yeah. Part of the game. He's but, definitely going to, but he shouldn't. Um, I'll tell you what. That was about Swiss. If he is, he needs the right insurance. It's facts. All right. The right insurance is Swiss insurance. Don't go left. Don't get robbed. Don't have your rates, deductibles raised. Make sure you're getting the right 
price or coverage you need through my guy Mark at SwissINS.com. That's SwissINS.com. Is that an octopus in your pants or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> see what I did there? Go Red Wings from Octopi Experts Woodward Sports. Walk into any Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men for an award-winning haircut experience from one of our talented stylists. Enjoy a precision haircut, hot lather neck shave, scalp and neck massage, and a hot towel treatment to top it off. Enter for your chance to win the $50,000 Perfect Bracket Challenge. With more than 25 Metro Detroit locations, there's always a Lady Jane's near you. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. Love Woodward Sports. Love wearing clothes. Then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com. Just click on shop. We have all your favorite designs, like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Woodward Golf, and of course, our own logo out merchandise. Men, women, infants, kids all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends. Impress your boss. Impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. What up, though, everybody, and welcome back to the Wilbert Heavyweights live on WilbertSports.com. Make sure you smash that like button. We are here in the Planet Fitness Studios for Easy, for Nick, for Chris. I'm Spencer, and you know we're the heavyweights. We had a lot, a lot of fun this weekend. We're having Sir, a lot of fun today. Good catch, by the way. Sorry. No, you're fine. That's what I'm here for. And, uh, yeah, we're talking lines. We're talking expectations. Yeah. And I had a question I put in there. What's the question you're shin, friend? What do you think will be a better unit for the Lions defense next year? The defensive line or the secondary? Because you got to think, we made the additions on the defensive line of a Marcus Davenport, of a DJ Reader, to add to a Lee McNeil, to add to an Aiden Hutchinson, to add to guys like Josh Pascal. What about Matthew Betts now? Matthew Betts, 12 sacks loading. and then (laughs) But in the secondary also, you made... Two pretty damn big additions of Amit Robertson yeah. and uh, Carlton Davis to go with a fantastic safety room of Kirby and Iffy and a guy like a budding star in Brian Branch. What do you think will be the better unit for the Lions next year? Defensive line by far. Uh, no disrespect to the guys required in the secondary. Amit Robertson. Hope that's you know, what we thought last year, too. Guy. I love him. Yeah, but the defensive line, we actually acquired a guy that's like a guy, you know, a guy that's considered top 10 at the the job he does in the NFL, which is like you, we said previously before, eat blocks, demand double teams, and just cause havoc, especially when it comes like that run game specifically. Um, we talked about the, the James Houston. Like when he did win reps, it was just him fucking sunning a lot of these offensive tackles and just running around because he's elite, elite, elite bend. And who knows, the Achilles injury maybe affects that. I, I don't know. I'm not saying that, but I'm just putting it out there. But like, yeah, I think of the defensive lines for sure. We take the jump. Uh, we're talking about guys like Lee McNeil taking jumps up the the, the, the likings of Justin Matabuke. And this, again, that's not just coming from us here as a Detroit network. We got all 22 films making those same kind of statements too. And that's a guy who not just is a Ravens fan by heart, but also his trade is watching the film, breaking down the film. There's a little bias in that. Yeah. You, you only point out to what you're, you're watching. Uh, the Green Light Podcast, obviously it's one that's growing, but Chris Long and his partners, they've all played in the NFL. They obviously all know ball. Uh, and they're, they're quickly growing because of, those, because of those reasons. And having Lee McNeil on there as a guest, uh, that's just like their early investment in like what may become a superstar. I think it's the defensive line by far. On top of a guy named Aiden Hutchinson who like we, we rarely talk about because yeah. like you, you already have the expectation around him. But I, just, I think DJ Reader is the defensive line by far. Uh, I was seeing, uh, where was it? Alan W. said that's tough. The D-line will also make the secondary better, too. Yes, that's very, 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 very true. Um, We saw how how much better that secondary got when they implemented a guy like Iffy in the back end, and that allowed Aaron Glenn to do what he wanted to do with, you know, blitzes and different things like that. So that's an Aaron Glenn guy. You got another Aaron Glenn guy this year in Carlton Davis, a guy that he wants out there, a long, rangy, physical cornerback on top of Brian Branch making a little – Sophomore leap. Yeah. So I, it's going to be tough, man. I, I think it's going to be closer than, than people expect. Um, we'll see. I think the, the the first pick in the draft or that first defensive pick in the draft will really make the make or break it. If they go Kool-Aid, if they go verse, 
whichever side they fall, I think that's what's going to put it over the top for either position group. Yeah, I, th- I think uh, I think I've I have a strong feeling that they don't make the move up. Again, I say I want them to trade up, and I, th- I think they'll trade up. It's kind of like low key me hoping. I mean, I also wouldn't be surprised, and I think he will do so. But if we stay put, I really do feel like if Kool Aid falls there, that's their guy. I mean, they they've like met him, with him, yeah, they met him three times already. Three times already. The production's there. Uh, obviously, the Jones fracture I feel like hurt a little bit of his tape, but still, with that being the case, has phenomenal number. Uh, phenomenal numbers. Only three touchdowns lit up in his entire collegiate career. Yeah, that's 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 crazy. It's yeah. insane. You're playing. He's playing the SEC too. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, and you know Brad likes a wounded. You know that's that. True. He does like a wounded. Once you heard true. that Jones fracture, he hit that Birdman hand rub. I he want it. I want it. Lip. I want it's, it. No diddy. Uh, who do you who do you think, Chris? <laughs> what, what position group you got? I got the defensive line just for the the reasons you guys said because you know the secondary also part of their improvement will come from the improvement up front at the defensive line and and last segment you guys touched on it but I I just think it can't be understated the addition of James Houston like I really thought that after that first year he looked like a phenomenal he looked like a phenomenal pass rusher he was putting up crazy numbers crazy efficiency so I think that that's a guy that while this line improves and Hutch improves, and at, that's the guy that's really going to make a big difference for me on this defensive line. And and again, I think you put more, you put more capital there. I mean, I guess you really didn't when you factored out. It was pretty evenly distributed between their between their resource between both both of those position groups. But I, I just think the defensive line it's where it starts. It's their strength. It's been the one thing that Aaron Glenn has been uh, proven to do to do very very well so I, I i like it nick yeah i don't think i can come on this microphone in the very next segment there after saying go. three guys are gonna have uh 10 plus sacks and then go back to the secondary so i'm gonna stick with the defensive line here but with that being said to the guys mentioning it mentioning it in the chat it's gonna help out our secondary tremendously and I know I don't think uh, our guy uh, Eduardo is a big fan of this player, but this player produces eight picks, 19 passes defended in two seasons. Kirby F. and Joseph, ball hawk on this defense, who I think is going to take an even bigger step next year with the pass rushing abilities that we are going to see from this upgraded offense or defensive line. So I think Kirby is ascending to be a goddamn star in this league. And that we know, I think we all in this room think that Brian Branch is going to be Pro Bowl, maybe even, or at least I believe he's going to be a Pro Bowl type player going into next year, all pro in the future after that. So I, I think the safety room's absolutely stacked as well. And I think we we barely are seeing what if he can be in this league. Yeah, yeah. and speaking of that safety room, I see a couple comments kind of confused by the safety uh, comments regarding – uh, branch because he was our primary nickel last year. Mm-hmm. But the reason why, and you heard Dan Campbell say this, if you want to like confirm it for yourself, but back at the, the owners' meetings, he talked about, yeah, we're going to try to get him playing a little bit more safety. Because once during the season last year, they did say, AG, hey, we just want to kind of learn one position at a time. We felt like he was more effective in that nickel spot. Plus, they had guys that could play the safety, Iffy, CJ, uh, Kirby, obviously, different position of safety. But in the 49ers game, if you look at the snap count, he saw significantly less time than CJ, GJ. Because they kept, and, and I think uh, Shanahan came out and said this, they kept deploying a heavy personnel, I'm sorry, a lighter personnel on purpose so that they didn't, the Detroit Lions didn't feel the nickel uh, in those situations. So I think they want to get him as safety just so there's less situations where he's not on the field because he's a playmaker at all times. Yeah, I but, agree. It's, you know, he is one of your best playmakers. He's one of the best players on your defense. He was probably the second best player on your defense last year. Mm-hmm. behind Aiden Hutchinson. So you, you want him on the field as much as possible. You need the, the, that type of skill, playmaking ability, and just um, intelligence in, the, in that defensive backfield. You want him out there as much as possible, especially in important games like the NFC Championship game. Yep. And the Warriors Sports chat, I mean, it looks like they're arguing about grabbing that rookie edge. Yeah, that, that should be definitely invested in, to be honest with you guys. Yeah. I think Hughes is probably going to continue to play that, that Sam role and that under they do where it's like, Looks like we have like five down linemen. I just don't have faith in Davenport to be there, bro. I just, you really can't give no. his track record. It's not fair. And the no, Matthew, you don't, I don't. I don't have faith in him being there all year. I don't. The have the Matthew utmost Best faith crazier, in. My in uh, we don't have another guy who's an every down edge on this team. No, like, Davenport. He is technically, but can he stay healthy? We don't know. 
James Houston is not an every down edge. Matthew Betts is not an every down edge. Like you, you need to grab one of those guys in the draft. Now, are either of you ready to say that either of these two position groups will be better than the linebacking room? Yeah, they both will year? be. You think so? Yeah. I even do. even was... with the improvement of Jack Campbell, because you've talked about Jack Campbell making a massive leap, and this this yeah. linebacking crew came up pretty well this year. Yeah. And if you don't. That might might end up being a disappointing pick. To be honest with you, I have the utmost confidence that he will. I do too, but I'm just I'm just thought about like if he doesn't, like I'm gonna have some egg on my face because like, the same as you, I'm like supremely confident in his build, what he was in, at the college level. I feel like a lot of the rule changes kind of help him too. Yeah, J- Campbell make a leap if he doesn't. Yeah, Campbell's gonna be a dog next year. I'll be upset. Which, by the way, if I read the room right, or heard them talking right, that was like a, a pick. Campbell was like. Brad made that for Dan. Yeah. I don't know if it's so much more like a Brad loved him type thing. Told you. You did. Dan Campbell guy. You did. I was like, why? Dan Campbell guy. Just Dan Campbell guy. You, you also just, agree that it's going to be better? It. Defensive line and... Uh, and secondary are both going to be better than the linebacking room? Uh, I could... I could see that uh, linebacker room be better than the secondary. We saw a few things. Yeah, I did see a few things just in motion, partially in motion, beautiful are, thing. Are y'all sleeping on the year, uh, the career year of Anzo? Certainly not sleeping now, sir. You know what, I'm saying? <laughs> what, was, what was that? Anzo's career year? Yeah. You guys think you can replicate it, have another great year in coverage? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think, listen, the, the part about these linebacker where Chris actually has an argument is that, like, again, we had to sacrifice, like, the linebacking play to stop the run last year. Mm-hmm. That's not so much the case with DJ Reader. So, like, yeah, they're, they're kind of more – Able to roam free and chill back there. I think there. they switch positions. I think mm-hmm. Jack Campbell is that middle linebacker next year. And oh, Anzo, I don't know about that. And Anzo's the roamer. I think Jack's going to have a massive season as well. Yeah I, think, yeah. I think like 140 tackles. Maybe less tackles for Anzo because he won't be blitzing as much. Mm-hmm. But I, I think we'll like we'll appreciate him more in coverage at least than we did previously. I can see that. Jack the biggest jump though by far. Like, NFL, like, we, we talk about it when it comes to, like, the cornerbacks, like, how tough it is to transition Jesus. from the college. I mean, although there are some guys who've come in Making year one and been dogs, like uh, um, Sauce Gardner, uh, a lot of guys Seattle. can do that. And, and we've talked about, dude. I, but I think, like, Jack is going to take the job, I will too. fucking book it. I would put it on reps that Jack Campbell has over 115 tackles next year. Like, there is no doubt in my mind that that guy is going to be a fucking freak. When you put – massive girth up in the middle in front of a guy like that where he can just see ball, hit ball, be the psychopath that he is, get downhill and attack people. That's what you need. That's what we – we don't want him to think. We don't want him to, to have to sit back there, diagnose, and read and react. We want him to be downhill being the cornbread fucking Jeffrey Dahmer psychopath that he is. And, yeah. and when he is that, that's when he'll be at his best. And I think he could do that next year with a guy like DJ Reader in the middle to eat up some of those blocks. The way that I'd articulate it for people, the, the jump or like the expectation I have of him is somewhat of Tremaine Edmonds. Yes. He's a lankier guy who was able to play the, the coverage, you know, obviously play the coverage in college. And again, as I was saying before, like you, you got cornerbacks who struggle to make that transition most of the time from the NFL, I'm sorry, from college to the NFL in coverage. Well, linebacker, you got to assume there's even more because there are a lot more responsibilities when it comes to that run game. So, like, he has year two of comfortability in there. And as Spinney said, too, like, the RAS score is there from being more athletic than, like, we originally thought. Mm-hmm. And, he's, again, he's just, just comfortability. And he's not going to have to sell out for the run anymore either. Hey, Carlton Davis, yeah, let him bat a ball. Okay, I'm expecting a Brian Branch or Jack Campbell to go catch it from that point. Yeah, me too. And, you know, if, if you don't want your balls batted, all you got to do Whoa. is show up to Shake Shack and you can throw them on a rope with no competition because the Shake Shack QB challenge is here. You can win two tickets to this year's home opener. Scan that QR code above me. Go to any Shake Shack location or WoodwardSports.com to sign up and you'll be entered to win. If you win the challenge, you get two tickets to the home opener. It's the Shake Shack QB challenge. Game is one in the trenches, and our big fellas don't mess around. The Woodward Heavyweights on Woodward Sports. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. 
to the Detroit Lions and Sheila Hamm for the best season in Lions history. Now it's time to let Brad Holmes cook. Woodward Sports. Woodward Sports has a new morning show. Start your day with Wake Up Woodward, Monday through Friday, 8 to 10 a.m., live on Woodward Sports. Join Kool-Aid, Flannel Sam, Broder, JB, and KG every morning as they cover all of Detroit sports. Sports talk, banter, and live fan interaction all on Detroit's number one sports network, Woodward Sports. What up, though? Welcome back to Whatever Waits Live on Sports.com. I'm your boy Easy. Join my guys for more Rex. What up, though? Young Chris, Nicholas Koloff. Let's go. Um, Jack Campbell comments. He said, name three big plays Jack Campbell had. He had two sacks before half in two separate games. And, I mean, I don't really count the pass deflection against KC, but he didn't have that. It was like a... That was a sick play. It was a sexy play, yeah. And I'm pretty sure he had a stop on third down when somebody's the quarterback was like scrambling up. He just pushed him out of bounds. Quite violently, if I'm not mistaken. Could be mistaken him with the other white guy out there, though. Hands out. One looks like Thor, though. Yeah. One's bigger than Thor. Yeah, for sure, probably didn't mistake them. Um, I, I had something in here from a while ago. I was looking back at DMs. I sent somebody about Jack Campbell's jump. I think it was okay. I did find it, and the, the reason why I think there's some value in him that was like you're not gonna see in his rookie year. It's just Beth. Like she looks phenomenal. She looks phenomenal. It's very distracting. Yeah. Um, I that's all I have. Sound of film style. Uh, but to be honest with you, you know, Jack Campbell, just the way that they're they're moving the game away from the physicality. Like, remember, I mean, perfect example. I think I saw someone compare it in the chat. It might have been Cousin Keys, but um, <laughs> Spielman back in the day, Detroit Lions Spielman, linebacker. The fucking neck rolls. Yeah. Zach Thomas. Like, remember, that was like the ideal look for your linebackers because you want them flying down across the middle, smacking the fuck out of wide receivers or stopping running backs. Well, obviously, you, you can no longer hit those wide receivers in those situations. And you're floating those linebackers more in the, that zone coverage. And uh, Tremaine Edmonds does extremely well. One, obviously, the athletic gifted abilities, and he's a pretty damn good player. But also, he's got that build. I, he's another guy that's like six foot five, lanky or kind of guy. I mean, that's what Jack Campbell is. And, you know, dropping back there, I think that's the jump we're going to see. I'm not, I'm not thinking jumps in terms of like those Chris Spielman plays, yeah. but jumps in terms of getting his hands on balls, disrupting plays, and being in passing lanes at the, with that six foot five frame. That's where I see the jump. I bet he gets an interception next year. Oh, for sure. I've said that. I said that. I don't know when I said it, but I know for damn sure I said that. I, that's I'm, that's my lock of the year. Jack Jack Campbell getting an interception. Yeah. And that's the one I'm hoping for, at, at least. Shout out to Silky Johnson, Worst Sports Chat. I was waiting to see you get on Spain's level during Grand Slam Fest. Why didn't you go off, too? I had to be the responsible one. So, somebody there had to be. It's fair. I was still turned up. By I was way. already compromised. Yeah. Uh, but, like, the way. Silky, I thought you weren't coming. The, the... Didn't he say he wasn't coming? Oh, he's talking, oh, you watched yeah, it. Yeah, he's probably watching yeah. it. But during the um, uh, the way that Aaron Glenn used Aiden Hutchinson in, like, pass, when he would put him out there and have him scheme around and got him a couple interceptions mm -hmm. because he's that big body. Wait until he could do that with Jack Campbell because he won't have to use Jack Campbell, like you said, to sell out for all these run stops yeah. because you got guys like DJ Reader. If you got a big body dude like Jack Campbell that Aaron Glenn can put out there in the middle of that zone – and wait for a tight end to come across the middle and attack the point of attack. Like, yeah, he's gonna make some things happen. And he also may not have made the tackle one on one every time, but like in those run play, like we're talking about the, the one of the best run defense in the league. Like he was a lot of times the first defender there just to make contact with somebody, yeah. slow him up, sneak a gang tackle from them at that point. But I, I think there's a big jump for Jack Campbell coming too. Who, who do you think? Maybe we say this for another topic. Honestly. But who do you think makes the biggest jump individually? But maybe we save that for its own. We should do that for its own. Yeah, save I'll that say that one for its own. Nick, were you about to say something? Nothing. <laughs> no, what do you got to say? That boy about to no, pass out from sweating. Nope, not at all. I'm not. I'm actually feeling a lot better. I was sweating for a sec earlier. <laughs> it cooled down. It cooled down. Oh, it was Tennessee. Tennessee was great, fellas. A lot of uh, I think we knocked off a couple kegs, um, a boatload of whiskey, a lot of tequila. Ooh. Um, but uh, yeah, we went to Tennessee some whiskey. whiskey. Yeah, we had some moonshine tastings down there. Ooh, that was uh, I that was moonshine. a lot of fun. We went oh, to like Jason Aldean's Aldean's like bar. Back to my hood. Is yeah. he from Tennessee? 
I don't know. She it was, was in, on the dirt it road. In, it was in Cali. They <laughs> made swerving like a drone. Yeah, um, it was a good it's time. Dude, it's 70 out degrees out. Huh? We start singing country. It's 70 degrees out. Nice cold beer sitting on Man, the road. Man, we laid up in the headlines. Fellas, but I wanted to ask you guys. I know uh, I know you guys got a lot of action um, opening day here. Not um, so much. Struck out in that department. But the Detroit Tigers, Saturday and Sunday, Damn, really, stole really sputtered. No action for the Tigers bats besides girlfriend. one Riley Green home run, I believe. Fellas, are we who we thought we were this whole entire time? Spend Mo, how you feeling about this Tigers offense? Not great, Bob. Yeah. Not great, Bob. I think I they're mean, precisely what you thought they were we're gonna see. I mean, that's what we all yeah. talked about was the hitting. I, yeah. I do think though the like Riley Green had had a good series out of anybody on the on the on the roster. If you want to look at one of them, it's Riley Green that had a good series. But um we need uh, we need Torkelson to get his head out of his ass for sure, and I do think it's going to happen. But the, the A's always right the A's always got us. They really the do, bro. Yeah, the A's was always really got do. us by the dick. What was the stat? Four in twenty one. The last twenty five home games against the A's. Yeah, that's absolutely unacceptable not, against not the okay. worst franchise in all of baseball. Yeah. Ah. Easy, you think we'll get back on track here? It looks like Parker got I think, on. I, mean, I think listen, Riley struck out to start. Nine games in, and if I'm not mistaken, like, uh, what's our GM's name? Scott Harris. Scott well, Harris. No, he's the president. Either way, he makes the calls, right? Yeah. yeah. I remember him specifically saying that, like, it could be a little bit unpredictable with as many young batters as we had in this lineup. And I think that's what we're watching right now. It's just the unpredictability. I mean, it feels like the two, from my eyes at least, the two most consistent guys in the lineup, have been your vets, Ibanez and Canna. Like those have Canna been Orshella, honestly. Yeah, I mean, like, like those guys. And I'm sorry, actually, I meant to say Orshella. Yeah. I apologize. I keto mix. No, I'm playing. <laughs> but regardless, that, but that's who you're seeing, like as your most consistent hitters, right? I, I mean, I assume that the numbers would show that too. I, I could be way off on that one, but um, I talked about it last week. I talked about it once more when we were drunk. I, I try to make it a, a, a topic. Dabber wasn't a fan of it, but I have a lot more faith in Green. Uh, turn around here quicker than uh, Torkelson. Torkelson just pop fly machine at this point. Bruh, he's, yeah. If I see one more pop out to first, I'm gonna lose it. He's uh he, well, he's up three zero right now. Torkelson's up three zero. Parker Meadows just stole second, so don't I don't think he has the green light here. You, you, you're taking all the way here on three zero for sure. Uh, but you don't you wouldn't give him a, a little bad, confidence. Bad I'm not giving him confidence. the green. No, I'm not giving him the green light here. You're taking all the way here. And that's a there walk. There you go. That's yeah. a walk. So good. You got on base. All right. There's the confidence. Yeah. Get on base. Yep. Okay. Very good. Very good eye in that at bat. Did not swing at anything out of the zone. So you like to see that. Tigers, correct me if I'm wrong. Because I, I go to you guys for my baseball stuff. Does Cole Keith not look like a, a, a kind of like a vet out there? He looks. The eye? Dude, he's. <laughs> he's he gets his, a fucking stud. Am I guy, Guy's a fucking tank, man. He, it's, he's, gonna, he's the one, like, he's got growing pains that he's going to have to get through because this is his rookie year. But there's a reason they paid him 20, 26 million before he played an MLB game. That's crazy. Like, the dude. Is that more than Torque and Green? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah they never. Oh, yeah. They, wow. they, haven't gotten their, they haven't gotten their contracts. That's yet. a big tell. Yeah. And Cole Keith, he's fucking. He's big. He's fast. He's got some pop in his bat. So, I'm excited to see it. Let's see what Kerry can do here. Yeah, Kerry's got two on, one out. We about to say, Nick? When it comes to Keith, um, I'll take a peek here, Spencer, if you want to take it away. Anything great happens. But Keith's defense Ooh. has been dominant yeah, from nice. what I've seen. And that was, like, the, the thing why we haven't – or the question mark calling him up. It, he was going to start probably pretty slow, get used to big league pitching because he only was at AAA for, I don't – not many games last year. I think it was 50 – 67. So I guess he played a quarter of the ah, minor league Gary season. Strikes out three Jesus. Pitches. But Colt Keith, his defense has that been really been good. Nasty. Obviously, when the bats are struggling so much, nobody wants to hear about the defense. But for Colt Keith, and that was one of his biggest question marks going into this year, for him to be pretty shut down at second base, it's nice to see. Uh, absolutely. And again, that's, that's a guy that's going to grow. <laughs> you know, like. I think that that one you're excited to be about, or you're allowed to be excited about. Definitely. I think Green. Here he is. I'm gonna continue to be in excited the about old, Colt Keith. Um, two men on, two men out. Colt Keith up there. Yeah, it's, really, it's really just torque. Somebody in the chat just called him a mental case. Is he going through it's, something? No, I'm PWM use. <laughs> very, <laughs> he's very, just he's very aggressive. Oh my god. But um, Colt Keith here. Let's see if he can get a poke. He's got a couple ducks on the pond. Put one out there. A single here scores Parker Meadows easily. So. All you got to do is get one out there. Pick a, big, the... pick a big hack at that. It's 1-1. One, one. 
big sweeping curveball that he missed. If I'm not mistaken, pay, big two run double on one of the uh, the first game of the doubleheader was it against yeah. the Mets? What'd you say? Big two run uh, double um, for Colt. Yeah, against the Mets. His OPS is actually lower than I thought it was. Ooh, right. there it is. Get down. Get down. Yeah, Got down. Let's buddy. go. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Colt, Colt Keith. Keith. Boy. Colt Keith rocking That's the our... left field. Oh. Torque out at third. It's all right. We got one. How are you going first or third on a hit to left? Because he fumbled. He fumbled the ball in the. Did he score first? He got. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he scored. scored. Yeah, yeah, he got board. one in. You still can't win your offenses. There he is. That that's bad. my boy, Blue. You cannot run into outs like that. Yeah, you can't. But that's on the pitching co or uh, that's on the third base coach because I guarantee you, Torque didn't run through a stop sign. So. If he did, are we going to go with MPWMU? <laughs> yeah, maybe. But I guarantee he did not run through a stop sign. But they fumbled it in, in left field, so they tried to advance him in the third. He got gunned down. But he scored one, and that's that's what you that's what you need. That's all we want. One run in the first inning, you'll take that. Around the world, around about merch, the Chris. world. Yes, sir. Great call, If you are easy. tired of the same Thanks, old mate. Detroit sports on it. merch, head on over go. to WoolworthSports.com. Click the shop tab today. They got the ultimate swag. Hoodies, tees, hats, all guaranteed to turn heads. So head on over to Woolworth Sports, click the shop tab today, and get yourself some brand new what? Merch. A ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights, live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. <laughs> Alive during Feldman Chevrolet's biggest New Year's sales event ever. Get the best prices on our huge selection of award-winning Chevrolets. Like this 2024 Equinox for $188 per month. Or this 2024 Silverado for $268 per month. It's the New Year's sales event going on now at Feldman Chevrolet, Michigan's number one Chevy dealer. And with the first pick in the 2024 media draft, Detroit selects Woodward Sports. Thank you for making us the number one digital network in Detroit. Glorious has a new bubble hash pre-roll now with diamonds, constantly pushing to create the best canna experience. This perfect boost comes from the added touch of pure THC diamond dust, allowing flowers with only the highest terps producing the best, making the best even better. Glorious Cannabis, check them out at your local retailer or visit GloriousCannabis.com. I'll tell you what, this is... What up, though, everybody? Smash the like button. Welcome back. Appreciate you joining us. Planet Fitness Studios, Wilbert Heavyweights. You know who we are. Fuck. This kid, this O'Neal Cruz kid, man. Beast. Yeah, he is... Ooh. Ooh. Great pitch by Reese Olsen there. He but hit himself. This kid is... He's going to be really good, man. Ooh. Tough. There are He's two, like six, seven. How tall is Yeah, O'Neill Cruz and Ellie De La Cruz are going to be two fucking great ball players for a while. I like this kid a lot. OP, OPS, a six four. He's big. Home runs. He's fast. He got hurt last year, which is why you know kind of fucked this season up. But O'Neill Cruz is going to be a stud. That guy's got to be like Wasn't six it? five, six eight. Oh yeah, he's yeah. huge. Was it O'Neill Cruz that like? Uh, like from a grounder to third. Uh, no, that's throw. Ellie De La Cruz. That's Ellie. Yeah, he threw like 103 miles 100, an hour. Yeah, like 103. That kid's that kid's gonna be the face of the MLB. He's a fucking stud, dude. Yeah, I mean, those Ellie like... De La Cruz, he plays for the Reds. Yeah, well, O'Neill just... Cruz plays for the Pirates. He's, I think he's. Like oh six, shit! Two. I was right. The first guy, six seven. Yeah, he's yeah, he's huge, man. Yeah, and he hit, he, he hits fucking tanks. He had like six home runs in spring training this year. We ain't gonna be running like. Uh... He looks so young, Reese Olsen. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's probably, I think he's probably only like he looks 20, like fucking 23, high school. 24. Oh, my God. I will say the Tigers. Last time he was on the mound, I was, I was listening Reese. to Dan Dickerson. Hell, yeah. Reese, I think we were, or I forget what game that was. Mets, maybe? I don't even right. know. But I feel like one of our things that we need to get going is our, like, Dominican scouting, like, yeah. big time. Because you see, like, some of these players come up, like, Ellie De La Cruz or O'Neal Cruz, and like they're absolute dogs as soon as they hit the MLB. I feel like the Tigers have really struggled with that for a long time. Scott Harris did that like the first. Uh, I remember I follow a lot of the like uh, prospect accounts and stuff yeah. like that. And yep. there was there's like a Tigers overseas prospect account, and like the first like three weeks of Scott Harris being here, they signed like good strikeout there by Reese Olsen to get the game started. 96 mile per hour, 
96 mile per hour four seamer off the plate gets uh De- or gets Cruz to swing, but um, yeah. Scott Harris signed like eight. Dominican prospects that were like 15 to 17 just like just like brought a bunch of it and that's I mean you get you sign fucking 20 of those guys one of them becomes your Tatis or your Acuna or, or somebody exactly. like that Albies yeah that's all you need so yeah that that was one thing I was really happy to see was he signed like I literally signed like fucking seven or eight like 15 to 18 year old Dominican prospects Shmish like but who you guys got the national championship tonight Got UConn. Oh, yeah. You want to yeah, bet on it with your Fuck minus Zach 245 ED. odds you got with you? I mean, he's been unstoppable. Fuck Zach Eady, dude. No, yes. UConn's minus 245. What? Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. It's like UConn, it's UConn minus at like six and a half, I think. Six and a half? Yeah. It was eight and a half. The Alabama game was close, wasn't it? Not until the, not the end of the game. It was close for the <laughs> I first turned half. It off, yeah. They ended up winning by like 13 or something like that. I will say I did put a bet out there. Spenmo, you're gonna love this. A little chopper to Colt Keith. Easy, easy out there for Reese Olson. Made good, the play. Good bet. All right, fellas. I don't know. I think he's my tiger. If anyone on Purdue is gonna be able to do anything besides Zach Eady in this one, yeah. they're just gonna be super reliant on him. Got Eady for 25 UConn money line, boosted to plus 251. How are you boys feeling about it? Say it one more time. Ed 25 UConn money line, boosted to plus 251. 25. Uh, can't even see. Is he getting, you missed it. Is he be getting down like that? Uh, I mean, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he scored twenty five points. But also, uh, UConn center is pretty Killigan. fucking good too. Yeah, he uh, was he's like seven footer too. Yeah, he's he seven was, two, and he blo- he was blocking the shit out of everybody on Alabama. And Edie, when he goes up against somebody who's seven like one plus, he's not as good as yeah. It's like you say, he's not he's, as good. His yeah. skill is being fucking tall. Yeah. When he gets another tall person, he struggles. There we so go. I don't know about that 25. Another strikeout one, two, for three, for Reese. One, two, three, 20. inning to start. Or strike out. Another strikeout for Reese Olsen. For one, Cole. two, three inning to start it off. You love to see that. Two strikeouts. Three up, three down. Beautiful start to the game for Reese Olsen. All right. We got to close the show with this. I know it's a sports show, but if you guys watch this show enough, you know we love our rap. We love the in and outs <laughs> out of it. This, I'm saying it weird. Yeah. I'm just saying it off to you, Chris. Yeah. Because you're the one who broke the news to us before it broke, hit the internet. I thought you were I, lying. I was in shambles watching that. I did not see that coming at watching all. Watching what? Give we some context just recorded, So we had just recorded our podcast, the Rap K podcast, which is up now 10 minutes before J. Cole's set went on. So after the show, we, record, uh, we, we sat back, we watched his set, and J. Cole, it's, it's about time to close. So I'm thinking, okay. You know, when's he performing seven-minute drill? When's he addressing this Kendrick diss? It's his own festival. J. Cole hosts this festival, Dream. Braylon Bill, was there, but run by his label. Yeah, shout out Braylon. And he just, instead of going for the diss track, I'm thinking maybe he's going to diss track, then lead to an acapella or preview another diss track. Like, really go for it. This is his moment. Because he did a little jab on, on seven-minute drill. But no, he completely reverses it, says... Kendrick, I'm sorry. I never meant to question your greatness. If you want to take a shot back at me, my chin is out. I understand. You are one of the greatest. Make some noise if you love Kendrick Lamar. Crazy. Crazy, crazy. Shout out to J. Cole. Great human being. But Soft after talking after right. talking the talk that you talked on those records, talking greasy That's what supposed for to do. years... Stand on business. You, you did not stand on business at it's all. The opposite of you're, standing you're on business. Even, even, in, even if we go back now, revisionist history, first person shooter, he's still saying, I don't even want to smoke with YB. Like, come on, bro. Like, this guy's talking like, I'll, I'll smoke anybody. YB. And he won't even young a, NBA young boy. He already went at him, though. No, he didn't. He, he literally said he on a song, I got, no beef. I got no beef with him. I got no beef with him. I actually want to do a record with him. That's cool. And like, J. Cole fans, that's the yeah. funniest shit I've ever seen, is how greasy they were talking Dude. on Friday and shit. And then after the uh, after it happened, after he apologized, they're all like, oh, he's just the bigger man. And, and, and it's just, he, he's yes. got a philosophy that you guys just don't understand. J. Cole does, fans are such fucking pussies for that shit, Whoa, bro. No, 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 no. Because one, one piece of context you missed is just the piece he was at in his life and the piece he's at with, like, well, his his trajectory, like the, I've been there before, bro. Like I, when I started podcasting, bro, I was like fresh out of like a lot of trouble. Didn't have like it wasn't working, but I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna find my peace. I'm gonna strive for things I care about. My son, 
and and like doing things I love, which is podcasts. And once I found that piece, bro, I achieved some shit I never imagined. J. Cole's been on like a hot ass run. Then he shouldn't have the talked, hottest run right now. He shouldn't have been talking shit. Well, no, he's he had talking to. shit. He, he stepped into, into that it. arena and he pussied out. They didn't pussy out. Yes, he, he just he was yeah. being the bigger man and continuing on the trajectory that he felt he was on without he, going that way. And he, he shouldn't have done it in the first place if he was going to be a bitch about he, it. He took it a step further. He's he human. even said, not only did he say, I'm bowing out, Kendrick, if you take a shot at me, my chin is out. His exact words. That's crazy. Like, that's now that, that's doing that's doing a, a, little, a little too much with it. But you know what? J. Cole is this. J. Cole is a philosopher because he had the bar. History repeats itself, and that's just how it goes. Yeah. And look at this. Look at that. Look at this. What? J. Cole Nobody apologizes to Kendrick for this song. Lupe Fiasco apologized to Kendrick for criticizing his talent. I'll J. Electronica apologized to 50 Cent and Kendrick. Macklemore texted Kendrick to apologize for winning. <laughs> this man is not even Candy Man. One. He is Voldemort. He's Bobby Yaga. He's Voldemort. Do not say his name at all. Unless you want the smoke. I can't wait to see what Drake does, how Drake handles this situation. Because you know what, Kendrick? Kendrick has proven to be the guy. J. Cole did not ruin his career, but he tarnished his legacy. That is a stain on his legacy that he is always going to have for this. But again, shout out to J. Cole for being a good person and doing and doing the... He, 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 did, he, did, like he did the grown man move. What's the right thing? He, he had a previous relationship with him. Like Obviously, they were close to the point where like... He stepped up. You want to talk about people commenting? No, Diddy. Like he fought Diddy yeah. for Kendrick. Like they were boys. And I just he did a grown man move. As a fa- rap fan, hundred percent disappointed. As a J Cole yeah. fan, hundred percent disappointed. But I understand his level of peace and like what he's trying to achieve. And it wasn't that. It wasn't going I, at his boys. I, I agree. I agree. And you know what? I need an apology from everybody that slandered to Pimp Butterfly. Yeah. Everybody that because even that J Cole shit. came out and said that shit was wrong. Yeah. And all you stupid you motherfuckers were on Twitter trying to talk shit like, oh, that shit's not even that good. You were just fuck. You're just followers. That's what yeah. you are. Group he said thinkers. something and you followed it to a T because you were suckling at his teeth. And now he's the one that came out and said, "Yeah, I was lying." And you guys just look fucking stupid. I know there's some people that feel that way though, like genuinely, like since before it came out. No, I know a few of them. That'll do it. We appreciate you all tapping into the heavyweights live on Woodward Sports. Make sure you oh. smash that like button. Boiler up. Boiler up. Boiler up. Fuck the boilers, dude. Get the fuck out of here. Zach Eady's a bitch. <laughs> for <laughs> easy. For Chris. For Nick. I'm I Spencer. You come with the heavyweights. We'll catch you guys later. Peace. <laughs> Why are you boiling up? Shout out Doug Campbell.